Welcome back to Kind of Funny's Harry Potter in Review. That's right, we are ranking and reviewing every single movie in the Harry Potter cinematic universe. As always, I'm Tim Geddes, joined by Andy Cortez. It's, I swear Kevin just discovered something new about this, the intro that Cameron Geddes made. Is it always all jittery like that? Oh, I didn't see a jittery. He just, oh, went, he just went, oh. <laughs> oh. Did you see what I'm talking about? Like, no, it kind of like at the end, looking. it goes like this. No, just see. a tiny, just a tiny bit. No, okay. didn't see. We talking we, about how cool we your got Kevin. Are? He's real hyped up. No, he, he's I'm drinking fine. some purple drink. It's red. More of like a red drink. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> You know what? It's definitely not purple. Yeah, it's not right. purple. I would say that. Uh, we can Tim compromise is, and say pink. Tim it's has been out of drink. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm back. It's, it's Tuesday. It's Nick, did you, miss, did you miss it? We were doing Games Daily and Tim is reading this news and he's like, here's this brand new news article that came out August... Second, <laughs> and his mind is just like, where am I? Like, what year am I in? Oh, man. It happens. It, happens. It, was, uh, it was some time traveling shit. We got Nick Scarpino <laughs> pouring his CZ, the patented CZ pour. There it is. There oh. it is. Oh, you hear that hiss? You hear that sizzle? Oh, that's tasty. This won't oh. be the only one we get through. This is a longer movie. I feel like, even though it was shorter one. than everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> it was the second shortest Harry Potter movie, but yeah. <laughs> Took me two minutes. Um, it's had a lot going on in it. This is Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, released on July 11th, 2007, <laughs> directed by David Yates, My who will freak. go on to, to direct a whole bunch of other movies. <laughs> Uh, including Half Blood Prince, Deathly Hallows Part One, Deathly Hallows Part Two, The Legend of Tarzan. Yeah, <laughs> uh, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, Fantastic Beasts: The Crimes of Grindelwald, and Fantastic Beasts Three, Four, and Five. Man, yeah. I really like this guy. I was unaware that there was five of these. Yeah, they're out. really gonna stretch out this fucking story, whatever it becomes. God damn it, dude! It, did we know that? Yeah. No, I did not know that, and that's disheartening to say yeah. the least. <laughs> I thought it was a trilogy. I would assume that they would just cap it off at the old three. Considering the last one was a jumbled mess, we were like, "What the fuck is happening?" Take out this old dog out back and just I'm, I'm take it for lie. one last walk. You I know spaced what I mean? out there for a little bit. I got an email that I was reading. Uh, we talking about <laughs> Fantastic Beasts? <laughs> There's five of them? Yeah. You guys didn't know there was five of them? No. Oh. Yeah. They haven't even announced when the third one's going to happen. How? Yeah, 2021 it just says now. You're right. There's no date on it, though. And it's just like, what? Come on. Let Whatever. us know. Whatever. They're not good movies. Um, budget of $150 million and a box office of $940 million. Buckaroos, Nick. It's a lot of money. It's almost good. Almost a billy. Yeah, buddy. Order of the Phoenix became the sixth highest grossing film of all time by the end of its theatrical run. Um, and <laughs> it opened to a worldwide five-day opening of $333 million, 14th of all time, and grossed $940 million, like I said, second to Pirates of the Caribbean for the greatest total of 2007. Caribbean, that's what I think. Caribbean. Caribbean. Yeah. It doesn't matter. It's the same. It's right. Yeah, you say tomato. I say Caribbean. Deal that's with true. It. Deal with it. Um, as always, we're going to avoid future spoilers, but what did we think about this movie before we get into that plot? I'm shocked that everyone didn't like this movie. I, I I mean, I thought it was fine. I don't think it's necessarily the best of the Harry Potter films we've watched so far, um, especially if you've read the book. There's It, it, it kind of clips by at a very, very fast pace, which I think does a disservice to the material because mm. like, I don't think you really understand how bad it was at Hogwarts with under Umbridge's rule and until, until you've read like 200 pages of all the shit that she puts these kids through, which is so validating when Fred and George do what they do, and then when she gets her final comeuppance at the end. Um, but I didn't I didn't think this was bad. I don't know. Well, I, yeah, I didn't I, know anyone thought it was bad. I, 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 I didn't found think this, I'm just fucking around. I found oh, this, like, I, I, you guys I were talking beforehand, like, this movies. is the worst movie. I was like, I don't think this well, is the, the worst, worst movie. I think this is the worst movie out of all of them, but I really like these movies, it, just in the sense that, like, this wow. one is, like, slower... And I just don't enjoy not enough Christmas in it personally. <laughs> Got it. The Kevin Got it. Christmas scale. I see. I, I like this movie. I, I mean, I like the book. Um, and obviously, if you're if you've read the books, you've always, you always have like your favorite and yada yada yada. We saw a lot of people last week who were like, "This Goblet's my favorite book." People were like, "Ask me, that's my favorite book." This is one of my favorite books, um, largely because this is where Harry really really comes into his own. Right where like we get the great scene where Hermione he's like we need someone to teach us defense against the dark arts and Hermione's like well considering you're the only person that we know who's ever fought a bat a dark wizard like you're the best person to teach us and then even visually he slowly goes from being a student to then wearing like the he wears like the the sweater that his dad like would wear or that Lupin would wear yeah, in prior like things Lupin. so he Dope. starts looking more like a professor and then he actually turns out that he's actually a good teacher I, I I love that and I love the transition from Harry being like a student to being like now I'm a leader now I'm actually the person that people talk about like me being having not read the books at all 
I enjoyed the hell out of this movie. Yeah. I Good. thought that like, yeah, compared to so the last one, um, the Goblet of Fire, where I was like, that's the one that kind of turned for me, where I'm like, I like this. These two remind me a lot of Sorcerer's Stone and Chamber of Secrets, where it's like, I feel like Chamber is worse than Sorcerer's Stone, but has some better moments, mm-hmm. and I feel the same way here, where it's like, this doesn't. There's no moments that are that hype, but there's a lot of good throughout it. Like a lot of things that that happen, and a lot of just character development, and a lot of. Uh, I love the whole Harry like kind of teaching the the kids and the way I thought the Umbridge stuff came off really well because okay. I, I have nothing to compare it to. It's just I'm like, cool, I get it. They're fucking taking over. And I love the idea of the government coming in to take over the schools, sort of fascist and, regime, and it's that's just so so interesting and something I didn't expect these movies to go into. Yeah, that's um, good. I was just gonna say the the ending battle is like fucking amazing. It's awesome. It's and great. that's it. it's great to see these two full blown wizards going at it. As hard well, as not possible. only that, but you get that great scene right beforehand where we actually see what it would be like for Aurors to go against dark wizards like Death Eaters, and it's just like no. The, I mean, the the one great thing I like about that is, and they've touched about it. They touched on it a little bit when uh, Harry did the duel with Malfoy back beforehand, where he's like. Don't don't say your spells, yeah, all that stuff. You you notice that none of them are actually saying spells; they're just oh, yeah. throwing out well, shit. Yeah, the like, and it's awesome. Things, man. And the scene, yeah, you're right. The scene we get to, which was I think I alluded to the very first episode of this show, but like there's a moment in the book where you turn the page after one chapter, and the next chapter is called "The Only One He Ever Feared," and it's it starts with with Dumbledore coming through the flu. And like seeing Voldemort, and they just fucking dude, go at it. And it's thing, not even like hype as fuck. And dude, like then, so then the order of the Phoenix comes, you're just like, all right, motherfucker. Mother. I just need, I needed Yoda flipping around. As well. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, but there's just a lot of people don't like Attack with Clones. But like, this is the first time we saw Yoda fucking actually have a lightsaber and use it and it's the same thing where it's like we've heard so much about Dumbledore now we actually sort of see right yeah. seeing like him doing this giant what the, the the bubble that protects him from the shards of glass to turn him into sand oh my sand? god the glass the thing was so holy yeah, but like, shit that's just gonna be in your see, hair you all see in his eyes yeah, yeah, you yeah. see in his eyes at one it. point though that he's like I can't keep this up forever like in Voldemort it does the same thing where they're like they have met their matches but at some point you kind of get the feeling like like Voldemort might overcome him but there's that great Fucking part. The choreography in this scene is so good. One thing I want to draw attention to is there's no music in this scene. It's all diegetic. Oh, so I, I love, love that part. Awesome. It's so dope. And then two, there's that beautiful moment where like they're going at it, and the choreography is just so cool because as he like whips his wand, Voldemort comes and he breathes fire, yeah. and the the basilisk of fire comes out, <sighs> and then it's just this like almost a ballet of you versus me versus you back to you, and then he takes the water to the fire and all that stuff, and then sand, and then it's just done. And then he's like, I finally realized that I can beat you because I'm in Harry's mind. And you're like, oh, fuck. And that's yeah. that all that part plays so beautifully and with the main theme of this film, which is like isolation and whether or not Harry should go out on its own. And the one thing that makes him different than Voldemort is that he has friends and yeah. he knows love. Our friendship, baby. And it's so good. And we get those you're really cool well. cutaways. Mm-hmm. We get those real, uh, really cool <laughs> moments. <laughs> <They're really good. laughs> yeah. Horrible. You too, you Horrible. Too very good. I don't. Terrible. Very I good saw too. that and I was like, I bet Andy is going to yeah. have a problem that, that is <laughs> That is Peter Parker going in front of the screen. <laughs> <laughs> just standing there. <laughs> that is that exact moment. Uh, I I felt kind of um, the same way I felt after Gob- Goblet of Fire, where I, I didn't feel like I loved it or disliked it either way. It was just kind of like there were some really cool moments. There were some moments that felt slower. Um, I still don't think I, I like this as much as Azkaban. Still, that's like Whoa. still my number one. Um, but yeah, there were. I, I think it was kind of slow in some moments. Um, but they do a great job with, I think, Harry's character development and sort of, you know, you see that struggle at the beginning. You see him struggling with his friends and his friends want to be there for him. Ron and Hermione want, desperately want to be there for him, even though they know he's going through a lot of shit. And and I love that they stick with him regardless because, you know, he's struggling and they're like, what do you need, man? And he's just like, I fuck, just leave me alone. And they're just like, all right, whatever you need, dude. Yeah, we're here for you. And they stick with it. And he sort of turns around and is like, you know what? Like, I need to. Th- that's what I need. I uh, I forgot who tells him that. Like, look, Voldemort wants you to be isolated. Who tells him that? Uh, Luna. Uh, Luna. Luna. Yeah. Luna's like, I want, love that. They want you to. Scene. Yeah, it's a, a great. Scene. If great I were moment Voldemort, dialogue. I would want you to feel exactly how you feel right now. Great isolated. moment of dialogue. And yeah. that's the moment where he realizes, fuck, I have friends. I can't do this alone. Yeah. And he even talks about that too, which is great. Like, there's the great scene where he's training everyone, and they're and they're, they're trying to convince him in the in the shrieking shack to train them. And he's like, you guys have to understand. Like, I've been through this shit. It's not like what you think. I most of it was luck. Most mm. of it was me. Just just fucking like haphazard, and then he finally realizes that like, yeah, it's luck, but it's also because he's got people around him that can help him. He's got a team, mm-hmm. and, and it's like it's so, it's 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 not like other stories where 
like Superman just realizes he's super powerful and then he can just punch through it, right? It is really, the, and from this point on, it really is the ensemble of people that help. And uh, that, that mix of people is what allows them to succeed, which is so the strength of the Harry Potter franchise in general. Yeah. In, in a lot of ways, oh, sorry. Go ahead. In a lot of ways, I feel like this movie is kind of set up and, and filler, but like not bad filler. I feel like it's substantial filler as you go, where it's like building the world mm. towards the finale that we're going towards and like kind of the transitional period from the last movie, where it's like, I loved how much they cut the fluff from this. Like a lot of things that I've complained about the last couple of movies, just straight up not in this movie. Does Draco even have a line in this movie? No. Fantastic. You know, the I love that. And then uh, Dursley's, Dudley, Dursley's. Durs, the Dursley shit handled great, I thought. Didn't this take is, long, it's one it, of my favorite was, openings to a movie. And it was cool mm-hmm. shit with to the Dementors movie. coming. I'm like, mm-hmm. all right, this fits into the world. Like immediately, it's London didn't feel like a, a joke. It didn't feel like it was the, the Roll Doll totally outside of the world of the magic stuff. It felt like it was the same world for the first time in these movies, and I enjoyed that a lot. And I thought that the way that they didn't have weird Ron moments, like Ron doesn't make a face this entire movie. Yeah, you know, doesn't it's he like, though? But yeah. he also, but Ron's also coming into his own too, right? Because he, he's starting to realize he's that being he's that not supportive stupid. friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's cl- he's, he outsmarts the guys at the end. Although you don't really see that scene, but and Hermione's like, "Oh, that was pretty clever of you." And he's like, "Oh, right, he yeah. mentions it." Yeah. He's like, "I'm, a, you know, I, I, I'm trying to help as well." Um, but more than that, Ron is also sort of like Harry's totem in this where he's like I'm gonna like he is always the one that's like I got your back some would say he's becoming the Samwise to this franchise right now Nick who Samwise what (laughs) I do love that line at the end though of like there's some good in the world and it's worth fighting for us that's fucking Lord of the Rings bro come on (laughs) come on come on on. on. I I do want to add like going over stuff right now it's definitely making me more like this movie's a lot better than I'm, I'm giving it credit for right now um, I, yeah, I was, I was also just going to give a quick shout out to Harry's hair in this. Yeah. Way better. Best hair. Do you want to rank man. it? Do you want to rank it right now? Right right, right. Yeah. That couple's looking fresh, but the style is hotter. Let's time to rank the hair of Harry Potter. Um, you think this is number one? I think it's number I think one. it's still one. number think, two behind uh, I think his hair's number one, Azkaban. Really? Yeah. Because the Azkaban had more of that, like... The cool, um, like whenever you watch uh, anime and like the main character always has the coolest hair. He he had like that kind of, me- but that's also just more my vibe. Sort of the messy, kind of spiky anime vibe. Azkaban is still number one. I, I, like, I like this because I, like I feel like it, it fits it, yeah. him best. Like mm-hmm. him being the teacher guy and stuff. I'm like, yeah, dude, that's your role. Fucking suck it, Harry. All right, well, I guess I'm unvoted. It looks like Order Sorry, of Phoenix bro. comes in at number <laughs> one. one. Cool. I like your new cool. song, by the way. <laughs> Thanks, man. Because there's no abs in this, so we can't rank abs. No, we can't. Oh, there sucks. are wigs, though. Are there? You know what? Let's just fucking cut to it. <laughs> Is it a wig? I don't know. Wigging out with Scarpino. <laughs> Welcome back to Wigging Out with Scarpino, ladies and gentlemen. Your one and only podcast that covers the wigs in movies. Uh, I'm your host, Nick Scarpino. With me today, I guess, is Tim Geddes, who yeah. had a problem with a lot of the wigs in this movie. No, no problem. No problem. I just saw this and I got a little, is, little is fun fact, a little theater, like serious face? fact for you here. Uh, Jason Isaacs, who plays Lucius Malfoy, referred to his wig as his Paris Hilton wig. We didn't even know it was a wig until now. Uh, so I it really? But there it is. He has That's long, a wig. blonde hair. I assumed it was a wig. I didn't yeah, even I think just about had to it. I just assumed that the actor had long blonde hair. I assume his hair. wig, Trelawney's wig. Uh, uh, You've changed Gump my Dumbledore life when it comes to wigs before. Unless you like, opened your eyes, bro. <laughs> I opened you, you your eyes, bro. You also made me think, like, are you crazy? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Are you wigging out? Who's Trelawney? <laughs> Trelawney's uh, the, the, Emma Thompson. Emma Thompson. Emma Thompson, oh. which I think is crazy. She looks so good, man. But yeah, it's so, so funny. That's Trelawney? Yeah. All right, let's get to the plot. Yeah, 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 library, why not? Um, uh, Greg's not here, but worry not. Nick will tell us the plot. That was your most sexual one yet. That's trying uh, to be uh, more mystical with it. Oh, oh. <laughs> 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 oh <he's sad>. no. <laughs> All right, the plot. <laughs> you seem to be laboring under the delusion that I'm going to. What was the phrase? Come quietly. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the plot for Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. And let me tell you something, Dumbledore, just a bad motherfucker in this movie. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. All around. All, all around. around. All around. Breaking, Breaking the start. rules and shit. Just, yeah. Still winking back. Still, still winking with do. the best of them. Oh, God, I love it. Uh, we start, of course, with some eerie tones and the Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix logo, uh, through which we push to reveal a glowing oil ring. Is this the, the first time that we hear the, the actual Harry Potter theme when it's opening? Mm-mm. No, I think the last one we heard that, too. Okay. The very... But this is the like first creepy. time that it hit me where I'm like, oh, it's a Harry Potter movie. Let's go. I, I, I think like, all of them start like that. I don't think they I do. Think they do. Or they're at least not like yeah. that bombastic. Like you shouldn't I, feel well, this one was, like this one was, in now. It's worth noting that this one was, I think, like super minor. Yeah. 
Yeah, this one felt way more subtle yeah, uh, and what? less bombastic than I would say Goblet. <laughs> I'm tripping. Oh, sorry, I, meant, I just meant minor tones, but I might be thinking mm. Goblet. Because I think yeah, Goblet This, this one's pretty tone. straight on. This is I, the theme. Yeah, I thought Goblet the had it too. Yeah. It might have. Uh, Harry is, of course, sitting in the, the world's most broke ass playground. I don't know what's happened here, but there was a drought London in London. Man, they need to figure some shit out. They got to figure some shit out. There's like three dead bodies behind him. Fun fact for this I think I noticed it this time around just for the movie setting. I think this is supposed to be the same park. That he was at when he first sees Sirius um, as a dog uh, in Prisoner of Azkaban, when the um, behind the bus or whatever. Yeah, when the bus, bus like stop. comes and picks him up. I think that's supposed to be the same park. It looks different though, because like, yeah, that one was like a park different. on the yeah. side of a road, and this one's like in the middle of a fucking cornfield that's yeah. been burned out in the during the Dust Bowl. Yeah. Either way, uh, Harry's looking at a mom playing with her kids, one of which, way too old to be playing on the swing set, but whatever. Uh, her mom's like, come on, we gotta go home. This weird kid's looking at you. And he's like, oh, I wish I had a family, but I don't have a family. <laughs> the closest thing I have to a family is Thug Dudley, who's gonna come up right thug now. Dudley, We're gonna call him name. Thugly Good from name. now on. Big old Thugly oh. has come up with his boys. Yeah, uh, He kind of, like, definitely a little bit of a character change that I didn't, like... I get why they have to do it or whatever, but at Azkaban, uh, at the end, beginning of Azkaban, I appreciated how they kind of made him just seem like this sort of like idiot, like this sort of uh, oblivious idiot when he's like watching the TV screen still, mm -hmm. even though his aunt is like flying up in the air. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I thought like, I thought as a kid, I remember thinking that Dudley was going to continue to be sort of like this sort of bland like yeah like, this yeah. dummy this sort of dummy like that just kind of hangs character. around that might say uh, like might be an asshole every once in a while but it's still like kind of just dumb as shit yeah, but this like one is totally just bully as fuck you, you cle clearly don't understand what happens to white boys when they turn 13 <laughs> they just immediately turn into thugly oh yeah <laughs> it's thugly man yeah. and thugly of course starts giving harry shit because he's been screaming in his sleep don't kill cedric and man they're just mean about it That's so and he's got all up. of his boys and they've all discovered basketball shorts which i think is just a rite of passage for yeah, all, all kids in general mm -hmm. just shorts it's that go right summer. right down to your, to your feet you got nothing going otherwise on. known as pants like really baggy pants <laughs> wait, wait, wait. is this not pants. the one where they introduce his nickname big d no one's gonna. No, I don't know. We're not I gonna touch on that. Big D. No. Yeah, I didn't know they said that, that. That's his nickname. I didn't catch it. There's also like book reasons that Barrett may get it's into. The only later. redeeming thing about Dudley, of course, the Dudley then big. brings Harry's mom into it, which we all know is a trigger for Harry. Like, don't yeah. talk shit yeah. about Harry's don't parents. It, we know this because the wand comes out, and Dudley's like, oh. And by the way, really hard to look like imposing with the wand. Yeah, it's happened a couple times this movie where Bellatrix is like holding it at someone's throat, and you're like, it's not a knife. It's just a stick of wood. And I know that you're gonna you have curses that can destroy people. <laughs> yeah, but it's not scary when you pull it at someone's what? neck. It's just not. Oh, uh, I love that. Of course, uh, before Harry gets a chance to blow Thudley's head off, uh, the sky turns dark and it starts getting cold. And Harry realizes, of course, what's happening. So he grabs Thudley and they run like motherfuckers. And they just run, which is weird. Like I feel like at some point, what are they running from? Yeah, I think, knows I think Harry, are coming. Yeah. yeah, I think. Well, I didn't know. I didn't know he, if he knew Dementors are coming. No, I just he knew thought something was coming. I just he thought he knew something, something was coming. Was coming. Yeah. yeah, like let's get the fuck out of here, Dudley. Like this is not good. I've been around shit like this. Uh, they run into a uh, like a storm drain area where there's lots of cool tags. Uh, hopefully, this cool Greg can uh, mm -hmm. tell us who those Sorry. people are. Uh, <laughs> and then everything gets real cold. We start seeing the breath, which is the telltale sign of the Dementors coming. Harry looks over. Fucking hyped. Oh, this man. is all like, let's go. Come um, to me, Dementors. And they're freaky. They, they're they freaky have skulls this time, this time Nick. Yeah, they're, they're not in their little garbs anymore. They took the thing off because it's hot. No, but I think, it's hot I think they I are. <laughs> I think they're still in the garbs, but I think they just redesigned them. They just them. pulled it back. They were like, but, no, but it's, it's, I think they made the, their like, skull. They made the hood just a little tighter to like wrap more around. It looks hella skull. tight. Yeah. Like well, it's just <laughs> on their skull. <laughs> it's really scary. They start giving Harry the Dementors kiss. Uh... They start getting, oh, thanks, bud. Uh, they start giving uh, Thudley the Dementors Sorry. kiss. Uh, and then, thankfully, oh, Harry tries to do the Patronus, scares one of them away. The other one grabs him. Uh, and then I think, wait, what did I, I just stick with my notes here. He shows. The, oh, that's right. He does that cool thing where he, he hits one with the Patronus and then whoosh, like whips it around to the other one. It's even, cool. it's even cooler in the book where he like talks to the Patronus itself. He's like, go get it. And like the Patronus goes and it's like, oh, fuck, that's dope. Really Everybody cool. know their Patronus really are? Cool. Yeah. I got mine this weekend. Mine, did mine you really? was a Bengal tiger. Yeah. No, you, no, it isn't, you liar. <laughs> yeah, <such a> liar. <laughs> do, the, do the test. Don't do your tongue that way. Yeah, that, that's <laughs> some nasty Barney Crouch shit. I did, I did mine this weekend. It's a dragonfly. <laughs> Get the fuck out. Let me see it. That's lame. Yeah, that's 15. No, but it's like, it's like Coheed no, that's, and Cambria. That's pretty really cool. I like that. I love Coheed yeah, yeah. and Cambria. They, their logo Tim, is a dragonfly. Tim, can you do yours too, please? I don't know what the fuck you motherfuckers are talking about. You can go out hotter more and, get, and test for your, your Patronus, oh, what your yeah. Patronus would be. Mine's a Bengal tiger. It's not. 
Mango Time Liar. Uh, of course, uh, Mrs. Mrs. Fig. Mrs. Figs. Mrs. Oh, Fig. Shit, Mrs. Fig. Good, dude. Yeah. Thank you. So to go back to my note about why she, like why I think it was dumb, she was cut out the first movie because it is kind of a big reveal that yeah. this lady who's babysat Harry for his entire life oh my has really been a part of the wizarding community. Like she, he Fucking thought she squid, was a dude. muggle. But then she's really like a squib who's part of the wizarding community. And it's like one of those things where they revealed in the movie and it's like, oh, like it's a big deal. And it's like, no, it's not because we don't know who this character is. Dude, Fuck. I'm right. Th- like, I look at G. I'm like, this a big problem I have with these movies is they just introduce characters. I'm like, yeah. you should have introduced them so much mm-hmm. earlier and yep. just built it because that they, and they, they treated that like a reveal. And it's yeah. like, this ain't no reveal. It's That's not. a weird looking lady. Who well, the but fuck she, is she? But she didn't really play that big a role in this in the movie. But so like that would have made. Fine. I feel like I that would have made it sense. I, I feel like it would have added more because it is like this is a weird reveal that if you know in the books it is kind of cool. But like, well, if you don't, in, then it's in, like, all right. If I'm not mistaken, in the books, he like hated her, right? Because she was kind of like totally different. And in this, she like flips it. She's like, let's go. And he's like, what the fuck are you talking about? And she's mm-hmm. totally different when she comes to save him. She's like, I'm right or die right now. Yeah. But she had been playing like this weird neighbor character that was kind of weird and like kind of fucked with him a little she, bit. She like kind of was a bad She was undercover. Sit- she was like a bad babysitter on purpose because she yeah. knew if the Dursleys found out that he was enjoying his time over there mm-hmm. like they, they would stop. they would yeah. wouldn't let her like babysit him See, well, I mean I do remember that part that reveal in the book being like oh that's kind of cool although I don't, cool. I don't remember her being that big of a part of the first couple books I think they only make m- mention to her a few times right maybe once. Uh, she that's shows up like once or if twice we had just there, seen yeah. her before yeah. it would have been like yeah. oh shit yeah, uh, yeah I, that would have been a cool reveal huh? can you imagine how awful it is to be a squib in this world like yeah. born it's to sad. a magical family no magical powers yeah that's uh, like it's like Izuku Midoriya Dude, right? dude, just yeah. like that's that. your herd story. Uh, Harry, of course, brings uh, that is. What does that mean? brings uh, <laughs> uh, Thudley home in a state of complete ill repair, or as uh, Uncle Vernon calls him, Yumpy. He's Yumpy. He's Loopy or Yumpy, <laughs> which is the word I was like Yumpy, and then I, I turned on the like subtitles. It. That's what it said, Yumpy. So <laughs> that's what we're gonna do. You Uncle to Vernon, confirm. just I love Uncle Vernon in this because the actor's gotten a little bit older, and he's just eating something out of the fridge with a giant spoon and never puts the spoon down. And he's like, that's it. You've done it this time. And he doesn't really care anymore. And Thudley's kind of fucked up. I was listening to the directors are like, you know, you're not supposed to be like, he's just doing it anyway. They're like, I guess that's just part of his character. Now. Right. <laughs> uh, of course, before uh, Uncle Vernon can reach his limits, his full limits, uh, an owl comes in and drops a note off in the ministry. Uh, they have evidence that Harry has done a Patronus charm at 623 this evening in the presence of a muggle as a clear violation of the reasonable restrictions of underage sorcery. He is expelled from Hogwarts, hoping you are well, Mafilda, uh, Mafalda Hopkirk, uh, who is a character that I thought was interesting. I thought this should have been, I thought at first this was Umbridge, but it's not. I it's a completely too. different no. character. Yeah, why? I don't know. <laughs> uh, and then Uncle Vernon just looks at him and goes, Justice. <laughs> Which is great, <laughs> but he's still holding the spoon. This whole think great. scene up till this point, I thought was a dream sequence because it was weird that the Dementors came to London and like with all that. And also the colors, we've never seen those bright colors in the Harry Potter movies before. Mm-hmm. Were they, they the, bright? Weren't the they playground. like dull yellows? He has a very no, interesting... I mean, it's like, like the colors the themselves, though. Yeah. Like, yeah. And all of it, I was just like, it was interesting. And then him getting expelled, I'm like, none of this seems right, but then they committed to it. Right. And I, I enjoyed that. Um, of course, that night, Harry has his first dream... Uh, that is, and his hair looks fantastic. I just wrote that note down here. Uh, <laughs> uh, his hair, <laughs> I'm such an idiot. That night Harry has a dream of his hair being really long and bad. Also, Cedric dies. <laughs> it's a flashback from the last movie. Uh, when he wakes, he hears something outside of his door. He looks down, the key starts to slowly turn. And he grabs his wand to defend himself. I thought it was until the, Dobby. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was too. Until the door blows open. And sock. we reveal the baddest group of motherfuckers on the planet. Mm. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. It's Tonks, the real Mad Eye Moody. Uh, King. Kingsley Shacklebolt and uh, a couple of the other Aurors uh, who I think we never really see again because maybe they died on the way to the thing. I don't know. There's just two people in the back that I, I kind of wrote their names. So one girl who plays that. the wildling. Well, what's that? No, she plays no, the wildling. Yeah, he already That's said Tonks. that. That's Tonks. That's Tonks. Uh, Tonks. Uh, That's a big deal. Tonks. Fun fact about Tonks, that her hair changes color with her mood, which I think is cool. And she also can just change her face and all that stuff. Apparently like that. in the books, her hair was pink. Mm. And they changed it to like purple and shit because they were like in this movie pink is on bridge Like we can't be fucking around with that. That's, that's tight. I respect that uh, Moody of course calls for their wands and tells them not to break ranks if anyone's gets killed And I love this by the way because He's so dramatic. I love it I think in the book they made a bigger deal out of Harry being like oh I've never actually met you before Because yeah. prior to this 
you were just in that movie was yeah. a totally different person. So I this was the first time they actually met. I think, it, yeah, he calls him Professor Moody, and he's like, there's no need to call me that. I've never been your professor. Yeah, I've never it's been like, professor. oh, yeah, that's weird to think about. So, yeah, they have a weird relationship where they actually have to get to know each other because the, the, the yeah. year prior actually wasn't him. And uh, uh, really quick, uh, something I left out last week is uh, the fake uh, Moody actually gives Harry the advice of, hey, you should look into being an Auror because you, I think you have like what it takes to do that. But then it's he also reflects in this one where he's like, that's weird that a uh, Death Eater told me that in disguise. So just little things. Hmm. Fun fact. Uh, they they, uh, they fly through London like Superman. Uh, and, and so unnecessary. Go, it's like, it's hey, fine. you know, what? let's, let's you know, be, not show our magic in public, except let's get as close to as many cruise yeah, ships you, as possible. Oh, yeah, but they're like oh, hidden. Forget what you know. They can't forget see what you know, forget what you know. You also right, don't know Andy. if they're invisible. They're yeah. invisible. Right. Think about right. that. Definitely not. Also, can right. we just take a moment to talk about how fucking cool Moody's, like, um, broom is? Like he, I don't remember it. He sits in it like a motorcycle. It's like a Harley. Mm. It's really he got his fucked up rad. leg. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. I mean, whatever. I don't care. There the was reason a fun is. fact that they're like they had to like make a weird ass broom because he had a weird ass leg. I think it's really cool. I think it might have a little seat on it too. Good for I him. I might have a seat. A little on side it. coach. Yeah. Yeah. Either mm-hmm. way, they're flying through London. We're seeing Parliament. We're seeing all these fun facts. And man, it just really makes me want to go to London. Uh, thankfully, if you go to kindoffunny.com/slash events, at a certain point, we will tell you where our meet and greet is going to be on November 23rd. Uh, so you guys can keep an eye out for that. They arrive at a normal-looking, nondescript building until Moody racks his walking stick against the ground, and the building starts to stretch itself apart. Of course, the Muggles inside are none the, none the wiser for this. Uh, but I love this. I love that this is part of the magical world where like this house just happens to be in a normal building, but nobody knows it because they're stupid muggles and <laughs> wizards. And they have no world. idea like that, you know, the the fish tank is all crazy, but they're just sitting yeah, there watching TV. And I love really that. Cool. They're just watching TV as everything's Forget going on. Forget what you on. know, Tim. You know, Siren Throne are in. Uh, Harry walks into the brownstone that looks like it's literally never been cr- cleaned. Uh, sorry, we'll let that and go by. And then there's an elf cleaning it. We hear an oh yeah. yeah, and then we hear an argument come from the kitchen. Harry catches a glimpse of Sirius, Arthur, Lupin, and I believe Snape's in there too. Uh, before being interrupted by Mrs. Weasley, who tells him to go up and wash up for dinner. Uh, she's doing her best to put on a happy face, but we're starting to get the feeling that things aren't so good out there on the Wizarding World. Uh, Harry heads upstairs and runs into a uh, creature who is at this point we don't know what this household is they haven't really revealed it to us but i'm just going to go ahead and say it is the black family household and and uh, creature is the house elf and he does not like the people that are in here no. uh, so much so that he is having a conversation with a woman behind the painting that's been covered who you assume is the mistress of the house and she doesn't like the people in here either she's like these are just fucking scums scum of the earth and they need to get in creatures like i know my pretty i know my pretty but like in a better way than the other series that did that it's one um, sock please just give me a sock just give me a couple socks <laughs> give me a couple socks in an hour <laughs> turn this shit out. Uh, Harry heads upstairs and uh, let's see, uh, Harry uh, goes upstairs where he is greeted with a big old hug from Hermione. Uh, Ron's there too. She tells him that we're at the, her- uh, the, the headquarters of the Order of the Phoenix, which is just the coolest name on the planet. I'm always like uh, kind of surprised how in some, I, I guess Goblet started this way too, where it's, it's interesting to me that they sort of st- start off in similar areas, like Ron and Hermione and Harry. Yeah. I would always think that I would like to think that they would all just show up at Hogwarts when the time comes, but they're always kind of like... Well, I, th- I think it's like the first three years that they all meet at Hogwarts, right? And then then they had the World Cup, and now they're doing the secret weird meeting thing, right? Well, it is weird that Hermione's Why is Hermione there. Yeah. Ron, that's, that's, Ron that's makes sense because the Weasleys by. are there, and Arthur's kind yeah. of on the... He's Arthur she in, doesn't uh, want to be with her muggle family. Come that's on. fair. They're dentists. I, I, yeah, I think I there was something in the book where she had like already gone on vacation with them, and yeah, they had like decided to... like. Have her go over there for a bit. Is this like not it, the it's one all, where it's she all for plot purposes. I get it. Yeah, but well, it's I mean, just yeah, still you weird. Get him in the spot. The, the, the main characters, of course, Harry's mad at them for not telling him any of what's going on. They have written a letter to him all summer, and, and, and they were like, "Well, it's not our choice." Dumbledore told us not to. Made us swear not to tell you anything because he didn't want to uh, get you mad. Or <laughs> I guess I, don't I feel know. like at this no, point, it's... stop expecting letters for summer. Yeah, you know, like it's never happened. Like people don't let it happen. Just stop. Forget everything you know, man. The the reason Dumbledore didn't want anything in posts was uh, to avoid um, letters getting intercepted by the enemy. Copy that. Yeah. The Dark Lord. Uh, also, yeah. probably, and I'm just speculating here, but I'm assuming Ron and Hermione made out lots uh, before Harry got there because Ron's tall now, and so he can finally contribute something to the relationship. Uh, <laughs> what we, is wrong with I hate him. him. <laughs> I, hate, no, I hate him, too. I hate him, too. Uh, Fred and George apparate in, and they're like, hey, we got this cool new thing that we made that we can go listen to the conversation that's happening downstairs. So they've, <laughs> they, they put an ear with a string on, on it, which is great. Of course, uh, we're learning uh, that Snape is a part of the order, which is cool. We also learn cool about something. Fuck. It's awesome. We also learned about something Expiamus. that... that 
uh, Voldemort is looking for that he never he didn't have before. Uh, but before we can really kind of uh, get some of those details, Crookshanks comes up and just bites, just snaps the ear right off the thing and takes it out. And I like as it's playing with it, you're hearing feedback like it's mm-hmm. a speaker, like it's it's like kind of fun little, little like the tune, production eh? that like there. there's, there's different ways to like go listen in guys <laughs> like you guys are wizards it's got to be like a, it's got to be a better where way the, where the invisibility closes well what I like about that is it starts to set up Fred and George's like little shop mm-hmm. they got going on where they're making all their things uh, which is cool just like daddy is this the first time we saw the apparate this is the first time we saw them apparate. Yeah. Because they're of age now where they can legally You've apparate. You've seen people yeah. apparate all the time. Yeah. yeah. I think I, if I'm not mistaken, I think in. you have to be like a senior or yeah, a junior you, you to be have, able to apparate. You have to be of age, which is 17. Right. They, they don't really like get into driving, any of driving, it. Driving, yeah. Uh, but yeah, like they, they have like uh, kind of like uh, classes for it, I think, in this year and next year. Yeah. And then you have to like go through a test mm. and whatnot and get approved and all that. Can you stuff. apparate anywhere? Uh, not at Hogwarts. Not at Hogwarts. Yeah, Hogwarts has spells cool. that, that don't allow you to. And like, uh, yeah, anything with like protective charms and spells, like you can only apparate there if you know the place. Uh, and like weird, like kind of rules like that. But Tim's uh, elves can apparate wherever they want. Elves are very powerful. Yeah. You know? Great. They're one weakness. They love being slaves. <laughs> oh, I was gonna say socks. Uh, um, just a gym sock. They see that and they just lose all control. Oh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> creature want sock. Uh, I don't at understand. Dinner, Harry is reunited with Sirius. Uh, he's told that the Ministry uh, of Magic is uh, has a good on goods on him, and they call him the boy who lies now. Apparently, there's a smear campaign out there. Uh, the Ministry of Magic at the Daily Prophet. People are just are, are not. Trying to believe him that uh, uh, Voldemort is back, and he's like, "Why? And uh, why? Why is Cornelius Fudge doing that?" And it turns out that he will do anything to avoid facing the terrifying truth that Voldemort is back. He just won't. He doesn't want the public to worry about it, so he's just going the opposite direction with it, which seems kind of silly because there's a lot of evidence that he's back. But I get it. It's political. Uh, they believe Voldemort is after something, something he didn't have the last time. Mrs. Weasley stops uh, Sirius from telling Harry what that is. And he say, you, you say uh, one, you say anymore, you'll have to induct him into the order, to which Harry's like, sign me the fuck up. I'm ready to fight. Everyone needs to stop lying to me, stop not telling me shit, and just realize that I'm the only motherfucker that's taken out Voldemort not once but twice. Yeah. Kind of, that last time. Yeah, not really. I had, really I had the spirit of my parents yeah, yeah. to help me. But like I, I like faced it off it again three times. I faced off this motherfucker. I once love when I was the, a baby. Um, once when he was part of Quill's head, and then this last time. I love the little back and forth between um, Harry head. and Sirius, where you know Harry's like, "I'm ready, let's fucking do this," and, and then s- and Sirius gives him that little wink, like, "Yeah, yeah we'll yeah. get you let's in here, bro. Let's fucking do it, dude. Yeah, I got you, son. Like Sirius is like, like, dude, come on. Like he's like the uncle that's like, he's cool he shit. Can, you're 12 years old, but he's like, you can drive the jeep. Yeah, you know, right? yeah. It's, it's just you're cool. it's you can, like you know, well, you can drink inside the house if you're not going to go outside. Dude, I'd rather you drink dude, in my house on just the weekend. Try a beer, man. Yeah. Everything's cool. Uh, that night, Harry has another dream. How you Voldemort make it so creepy? is whispering his name, <laughs> and we hear uh, the echo of Hopkirk's voice expelling him. Then we hear Mister Weasley talking in the kitchen about uh, something about the entire wizen. Wizen gamut, gamut, uh, wizen gamut. Yeah, which I don't know gamut. what that was a reference to, but I just put it in here. Uh, that's yeah, but, that's their like. Um, <laughs> It's like the Supreme Court. Yeah. Cool. It, it's all the people that make the rules. Okay, yeah. so presumably those are the people who are going to put Harry on trial in the next scene. Mm-hmm. The whole gang uh, takes the tube. Mr. Weasley seems to not know literally anything about how the, the subway works, despite being in charge of that division in the Ministry of Magic that specializes yes. in muggles. It doesn't matter. Uh, they had, uh, He looked like me when I was in London last year. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I was just like, what? I, Tim, do you have the money? That I, gotta- <laughs> I was so confused, dude. Uh, they, had a, they had to a, one of those classic red phone booths, uh, which is the visitor's entrance to the ministry, put money in, and it slowly lowers them into the ground when uh they exit or we see the entrance to the ministry for the first time it's a massive hallway of fireplaces uh connecting incoming witches and wizards to the ministry via the flu network uh also shout out to all the black tile work they've done which i think is dope great i just think it's really cool looking i think it's dark i think it's ominous i think it's clean and i think it's just perfect for the for the the ministry especially the one in london reminds me of control great game great game you've been Mm -hmm. liking it a lot i've been Mm -hmm. following you on twitter uh more newspapers you see more newspapers asking you on twitter like three months Instagram. Oh, Instagram. <laughs> I still don't follow you on Instagram. Uh, more newspapers asking if Dumbledore is good or dangerous. And there's a giant banner of Cornelius Fudge looking kind of like noble, but also a little bit totalitarian. Uh, they get in the elevator with Shacklebolt. Uh, he tells them that they've changed the time of the hearing. It's in five minutes, which is like a shitty m- move you from bitches. the ministry. Uh, and we don't know why they would do that. Why would they move that up? But we figure it out in about 10 minutes. When Dumbledore comes really in. Really cool. Uh, they get, uh, I just see. happen to be here three hours three early. Three hours early. Yeah. 
Oh, by a happy mistake. Yeah. Uh, before they enter the courtroom, they see Lucius uh, talking to Cornelius Fudge, presumably buttering him up for uh, Harry's expulsion, behind which there is a door that will play in uh, later in, mm. uh, uh, in the third act. Uh, the hearing commences and Dumbledore comes in like a motherfucking boss. And he, he announces himself, which I love. With his He's seven names. Or Albus, whatever. Percival, Wolfric, Brian, Dumbledore. Which is just the best. And he, uh, they were like, oh, you got the message that the hearing's been moved up. He's like, no, actually, I missed the message. But by a happy coincidence, I arrived at the ministry three hours early. Isn't that crazy? And I love this character trait of Dumbledore. Because he never gives them the satisfaction mm -hmm. of, like, telling them that I outsmarted you. It's always like, oh, it's just happenstance. But in reality, you're like, I have people gotcha, fucking bitch. everywhere. And you cannot pull shit over on me. But I'm going to kill you with kindness. It's sort of like uh, when Jean-Luc Picard talks to the Ferengi, you know what I mean? There's always that like, yeah. you know, like he, he's very diplomatic, even though in the back of his mind, he's like, I'm going to fucking gonna at get, some point blow your ship up. He's yeah. going to get the Ferengi. I'm going to blow your ship up. Uh, we get the same thing when he's talking to Dolores in like five minutes when she's like, excuse me, like, it sounds like you're accusing the minister. And he's like, mm. It does. Am I? Oh, I mean, only them. Uh, they could do it. Yeah. Interesting. Well, I, but no, but, but but you remember correctly. He and that's how this scene progresses. Is they they're obviously putting Harry on trial for using his Patronus, and uh, Dumbledore is like, "Hey, their kids are allowed to use magic under dire circumstances." And they're like, "Well, we don't believe a Dementor was there, and you don't have any proof." And they're like, "As it stands, we do have proof, actually." Enter Mrs. Figs, who is a complete moron, uh, but complete manages moron. to get across. Like she thinks she has a vote at the end, too, which is very very clever. Uh, they were like, "Oh, uh, this is the best part." They're like. Can you describe what they look like? She's like, well, one was tall, and one was tall but fat. And they're like, not the kids, you fucking moron. <laughs> the Dementors. Oh, and then she so has dumb. the horrible eerie line where she's like, "It's it, everything went cold and dark. And then it was as if all the happiness had gone out of the world, which is just terrifying. Well, didn't they always, didn't they repeat that from yeah, Azkaban? From, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's true. Uh, of course, also, then Umbridge, I don't think she, I don't think she could see it. Yeah, they don't, they don't really um, go in. I, they might mention it in the movie, but yeah, Squibs. Since can't they don't have the magical power, can't see, actually can't see Dementors. So that was like kind of Fudge's argument against like her word was like, ah, but they can't see uh, Dementors. So like. But they can feel it. Yeah, so. it's like, it, it's all hearsay, you know. Oh, uh, okay. I, I, really I was wondering, like, how did she know that line when she was like, you know, don't, put away, that don't put away your wand. Yeah. Because they might come they back. Might come back. Right. Well, I, I just feel, I don't know. Uh, either way, uh, Cornelius Fudge says the odds, like, this is, Dementors don't randomly attack muggles. Like, the odds of that happening, the odds of them finding a, a wizard in the wild and attacking them is ridiculous. To which Dumbledore goes, yeah, you're absolutely right. Which means they weren't there by coincidence. At which point we get the first of the throat, <laughs> of the throat clears. And it's just every time, <laughs> every time you hear it, you want to so kill it. I hate her She's so much. She's so good at making you so hate her. Good at fucking like, perfect. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I wrote the actress's name down uh, later just to give her a shout out. But that actress is fucking plays this perfectly. Also, and what fun she must have had doing this. The the wardrobe choice, like the, oh, even in this, when little she's pink in the collar the, coming yeah, up, the like, little pink like collar. RBG, like a little yeah. little little extra. It's just it's, it's so well extra. done, so well done. <laughs> uh, of course, she says, uh, uh, let's see, uh, she tells. Them that the Dementors are under the control of the Ministry, which means that if someone ordered them there, then uh, are you accusing the Ministry of ordering the attack? Uh, to which, again, I like this bat, this cat and mouse game. Dumbledore doesn't say yes. He goes absolutely not, which is why I'm sure the Ministry will launch a full scale investigation into how they got there, uh, which is just sort of like a checkmate, right? Uh, checkmate. Let's see. Uh, and then, of course. Movie. She was like, well, who would order that kind of attack if it wasn't it? And Dumbledore's like, look, it's clearly Voldemort. And clearly he would do that. Uh, he wants, and he was trying to get Cornelius to understand at this point, this is the one point where he does break character. Uh, and then Amelia Bones calls for a ruling. Uh, those in favor of convicting him, and it's pretty much just Dolores Umbridge. Everyone else clears Harry, including Mrs. Figs, who like raises her hand, even though she's just <laughs> doesn't realize understand. she doesn't get a vote. Uh, <laughs> Harry's clear, but when he goes to think Dumbledore, Dumbledore just bounces out on him. Flash four, we're at platform nine and three quarters, and the gang's all there, including Padfoot, who is who, just walking beside him, and everyone's like, dude, what the fuck are you doing? Again, just, dude, you want to drive the Jeep? Have a beer, it's fine. <laughs> he's just throwing caution no to the wind. No one knows he's Padfoot, right? Like, there's such. Oh, I guess Peter Pettigrew probably told everyone. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah there, there's a moment in the book where, like, Malfoy kind of, like, teases uh yeah, Harry, that's right. and yeah. like Harry's like fuck he knew that that was Sirius Black yeah, yeah. No. uh they have a touching scene where they go into a small room and Sirius gives him a picture of the original order of the phoenix uh and he was like a few of these people have been killed and then talked about the long bottoms how they got the worst of it um and he's like look man Harry's like is there going to be a war and Sirius like it says it feels like it did before 
Yeah, it's, it's really like, scary. It's really I fucking chills. scary. I, yeah. you saying I that. feel like um, giving him that photo and then explaining that like most of the people were dead is such a fucked up thing to do right before you're you're about to leave. You just be like, hey, here's I a photo you're going of to everyone. Do your parents die? Yeah, but see, his this, parents went crazy. This guy got killed. Uh, Moody's fucking crazy. Like I know you're yeah. gonna learn about grammar. Moody. <laughs> <laughs> and that's that's like <laughs> best case scenario. You wind up like Moody. Yeah. <laughs> Worst case is you wind up like long bottoms of the other person that died, uh, or uh, your parents, or your parents who got murked. Uh, Harry makes it to the train while he's uh, while he walks. Through the crowd, he sees uh, Dumbledore in just a, do- or excuse me, Voldemort in a dope ass black suit. Dope ass suit. Some parcel tongue, Looks and Harry like wakes Slender up on the train man. car. Yeah. Looking like Loki, man. Uh, with Hermione and Ron. Uh, we're at Hogwarts. And as they get off the train, Ma- uh, Malfoy gives them shit. Uh, he got tall too. So it's like, damn, dude. How come everyone grew except for Danny Radcliffe? Do you think it's the steroids? As the carriage is pulled away, I don't know. He's, like, he's not even on. muscular. He's trying to get all buffed out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as the carriages pull away, uh, we see one carrying Cho Chang, and she looks back. And then uh, Neville steps up and says, "What's up?" And he got tall too. And Harry finally sees what's been pulling the carriages. We're starting to see a theme here with. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm just saying, like, got tall. Even our mighty got tall. It's Except me. No, it's, it's not, it's, I'm just saying it's not fun to go into your third year and realize all your friends got taller. Yeah, yeah, it sure. does really suck. It's fucking horrible. I've been there, man. It's it's, yeah. it's like how tall was Tim before? Like, oh my god, tiny, dude! Right? He, he went from a normal arms. person to six feet tall. Stupid. In, his brother's like nine feet summer. tall. God, I hate them all. I hate, I hate all you tall it. people. Tallies. And guess what? <laughs> I stayed four nine. Cool. Damn it. Cool. Great. That was great. I've been there. I've been there. Uh, of course, Harry, for the first time, sees what's been pulling the carriages, and he's like, oh my god, I've never seen these. What the hell are these things? Hermione's like, no, 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 they just, they're pulled by magic. He's like, no, it's a terrifying zombie <laughs> it's a pegasus. It's death horse. It is a horse with wings, and it's terrifying. It looks like um, a mountain World of Warcraft that you unlock later on. Yeah, of course, later there's a, that's a person <laughs> on the carriage that can see those things as well, and we get introduced for the first time to Luna Lovegood, uh, who she can see them too, and she's weird as fuck, and Hermione accidentally calls her loony love good it's which so is funny. sad yeah it's, so it's like dude leave her alone she's weird as fuck she's but also fun. she's so endearing i we're, love her we're just gonna call her love good like we're just like jk that's her love good that sounds like it's the love goods is fucking was naming characters hell yeah luna love it good. would be love good it sounds like a kiss uh, song sex good and let's get it Fuck's on good. with the, yeah <laughs> socks good uh, oh my god Why? she's wearing a necklace and harry's like oh that's a nice necklace she's like keeps away the nargles and nobody knows what the hell a nargle is <laughs> she's, she's so weird fucking as fuck. weird the callback uh, at the end is really funny dude i love it i love it uh in the great hall of course dumbledore gives the opening announcements uh haggard is on temp leave and the new defense against the dark arts teacher is none other than professor dolores umbridge as he starts talking as she keeps talking she clears her throat and it interrupts him because she gets up to give a speech, and man, we just want to just. She's like, "I hope we can all be friends." And then George is like, "That's not. Gonna, that's unlikely." Um, and she makes it clear that progress for the sake of progress is not what she's all about. We must perfect what can be perfected and prune practices that ought to be prohibited. Uh, to which point, everyone's like, "Oh, this is not going to be good." And then Hermione. <laughs> Uh, Hermione lays it out what's going on everyone's like where's she come from and Hermione's like you are all fucking idiots dude none of you pay attention this means the ministry is interfering in Hogwarts and this is the beginning of the end uh, back in the common room uh, people uh, oh yeah people are reading the Daily Prophet excuse me I have a lot of abbreviations here and that one just said DP and I was like are you making a joke there uh, the Daily Prophet, which accuses Harry of being a plotter instead of a potter fun little plotter and then Seamus of all people Fucking Seamus. Fucking Seamus. Oh, like, great, just let's give him something to do. Gives him shit. Like, my, my man didn't want him to come back because Harry, hey. And then everyone's like, fuck you, Seamus. Was that yeah. your Was that your choice? Oh, Harry, Harry, hey. <laughs> hey. hey. <laughs> that's my, I, that's I my really choice. I really like well. uh, Harry like, fighting back and being like, Oh, you're going to have a go at my mom? And it's like, I'll go have a go at whoever insults me. Yeah. You wanna, it's like, good for you. It's a funny ass line. But then you want to talk about awkward stances, fucking mom. though? Like the fucking, you were talking about last movie where like Harry was like going up against Voldemort and he's just kind of like standing there. This exchange is just like the, I give me something. Give me some blocking or some shit instead of them just fucking standing there. They're Damn. angry, dude. They're using their words. Get in each other's faces or something. <laughs> like a normal fucking 15 year old. Exactly. Uh, of course, Ron, tall Ron comes to his rescue and was like, hey, tall nobody... Ron, we're not going to do this. He's thing. like, you know what, Harry fucking <laughs> big Harry, Ron. I, I doubted <laughs> Harry last year, and you know what, that was a mistake. I got Harry's back now forever. I believe Harry. You should believe Harry, Anybody too. else want to go out to Harry? Yeah. Like, I love that. He's like, so, bam, bam. And he's yeah. like, watch out, I'm mini tall guy. Now, dude. Watch out, mini guy. And he grabs Harry. He just pulls him up. Like, oh, he's like, hello, let's go up to the door. Let's go up to the room. Ooh, I'm getting one. Nick, milk. can you roll your other sleeve up, too? I can. I can. Uh, upstairs, Ron <laughs> tries to calm Harry down, but Harry's like, dude. You just don't fucking get it, man. Uh, he's like, I'm fine. And Ron's like, I don't think you're fine. He's like, I'm fine. 
So Ron leaves the room. Uh, Harry has another dream about a weird orb that's being held in the ministry. Uh, and then we are in the defense against the Dark Arts class uh, with none, helms by none other than Professor Dolores Umbridge. The kids are trying to catch uh, an enchanted paper bird. It's like cute. They're having fun. It's like the first day of school. And then pff, that thing just ignites in fire. Just like their hopes and dreams. Yeah. Forever to being able to defend themselves. Who could have done um, it? And she introduces the students to the owls, which are the ordinary wizard levels. And I thought a, a fun piece of trivia that I saw here uh, when I was watching the movie was that the uh, ordinary levels are a real thing, mm -hmm. which I didn't know. Ordinary levels? That's like a real... Um, Oh, there's a whole other thing yeah. right there. I didn't yeah. realize that. Well, you know what? We're, it's a it's long time. It's fine. You'll get there. Uh, evidently, in, in the UK, the ordinary levels are like the uh, are like a test, and then they like have the, the advanced levels. Exam. Like the star exam. Like oh, the okay. SATs. So they just um, added a W in there? So they just, you just put the wizard levels wow. in there. And that works out real well Isn't that fun? Listen, man, you're not the only one that can do trivia around here. <laughs> He's putting it asleep. He's, He's putting it away the microphone asleep. I don't know why though. Okay. Uh, it's a show of strength. Dolores, of course, gives them all the Defense Against the Dark Arts books for beginners. And man, it just looks like a kid's book. It looks like it's curriculum straight from the ministry, which is basically useless. It's theory, and she says, "Look, we have all decided that a theoretical knowledge is sufficient for getting through the owls, which is all you guys need." And Harry's like, "But what about Voldemort?" And she's like, "There is no Voldemort." And he's like, "He's out there." And she's like, "You get detention." Basically, because you're just an obstinate little kid, and I'm kind of half on her side because he's like speaking at a turn and not raising yeah. his hand. LOL. Uh, the class she reminds me of like Kellyanne Conway and Sarah Huckabee, like mixed together. Did you I say was thinking, LOL instead yeah. of IMO. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I did. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, as Harry persists, she gets the tension, and then she says, See me later in my office. And then we go up to her office, and I'm conflicted about this, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> well, let's have a second here. Let's have a second here uh -huh. because, for one, it is all pink, mm -hmm. but two. There's a lot of cats, and we've hit the point plates, of cat saturation plates. on the plates saturation. where I'm like, I Great think attention. Joey would love this room. That's how I felt. I like that she, like, because we've seen this room now multiple times before. We've seen it with uh, Blonde uh, Prince Charming uh, guy. Gild no, Gilderoy. Yeah. We saw Gilderoy, and we've seen we Lupin's also room. Lupin, and we saw and it with Moody. But it looks totally different right now. Pink. And I really like that she like decked it all out. Man, they went all in with these you cats, know? and it makes me go like I would I would just drop a little acid and just sit in this room yeah. for a while and let the cats just consume me. <laughs> I don't like Dolores, but I respect her. I respect her. I respect her. I respect her commitment yeah. to the aesthetic. Yeah. I'll just put it that way. Uh, it's all pink. Harry enters, and uh, he's like, she's like, you're gonna be writing some lines today, and he's like, well, I didn't bring a quill. She's like, it's okay, I have a quill, and then. And she's like, it's a special quill. But he's like, well, where's the ink? She goes, you don't need ink. And as he starts writing the line, uh, I must not tell lies, uh, that starts getting scribbled in his fucking left hand. As, long, his as left long as it takes Fuck. for it to sink yeah. in. Yeah, he's like, how many should I write? As long as it takes for it to sink so in. So fucked up. And it's twisted. At this it point is. in the book, you're like, whoa, this is really fucked up. And then you see the movie, you're like, well, that translates pretty more fucked up to the screen. A lot of pride. He could have just been like wrote it once and been like, oh, no, no, that hurts. I'm out of here. You won. Yep. Uh, this is a point where I made a note that her uh, the actress's name is Imelda Staunton, uh, and she's just so fucking fantastic in this role. She ju you, she, you just hate her, mm -hmm. but she's such a powerful force on screen. It's fantastic. Uh, back in the common room, Fred and George are, are selling their wares, uh, things that will make students sick to get them out of class, yada, yada, yada. So we start getting more introduced to that. Uh, Hermione spots Harry's hand and tells me he needs to tell Dumbledore, and Harry's like, nope. Uh, Dumbledore no has snitch. enough. What's that? He ain't no snitch. Hey, he's not a snitch. Uh, also, Dumbledore has enough on his plate. Uh, she's like, you got to report this or at least tell someone about this. And he's like, it's perfect. It's, I'm not doing it. Uh, and she's like, it's it's simple. He's like, it's not simple. Nothing simple. You guys don't understand. I'm having a crisis. Leave me alone. He walks away again. Uh, seasons change, and Harry writes to Padfoot. Uh, in spite of being at Hogwarts, I feel more alone than ever. Uh, Harry walks to Hagrid's, but no one's there uh, out in the forest. He sees one of the zombie Pegasus is flying around uh, and he follows it and he finds Luna hanging out with a herd of them. Uh, she's shoeless. And he's like, what happened to your shoes? She's like, I don't know. Someone stole them. Probably the me. warbles. And she's like, they're playing a joke on me. Probably maybe the nargles. We don't oh, know. Nargles. Said the yeah. Wrong word. Uh, she's like, I'm a, and then, to, to which I'm going to blame it on that useless fuck Seamus. I think he fucking did it. And I think he needs to hang by his fucking toes for a while. Seamus. You giant piece Shame of on shit. You. I don't think so because Shame is Gryffindor and she's uh, Ravenclaw, yeah, right? I know. That's a good point, my theory. Uh, <laughs> you, you, yeah. Uh, Harry tells. Uh, you debunked me. <laughs> uh, she tells Harry that the creatures are called Thestrals. Uh, and she says they're very gentle creatures, but they get a bad rap because they're uh, they're a bit different looking. And I like that because obviously it's synonymous with uh, with Luna and with Harry at this point, too. Uh, they're, just, uh, they're both sort of um, misunderstood creatures. Uh, she's like, he's like, why can I see them? You can't. She's like, well, they can only be seen by people who have seen death. And we learn that Luna. Luna's mom died from an experiment gone wrong. Uh, <laughs> thankfully, she still got her dad. 
Uh, and she's like, by the way, for what it's worth, we both believe you that Voldemort is back uh, and we're on your side. And Harry's like, well, you guys must be the only ones because I feel really, really alone. And she goes, well, if I were you know who, I would probably want you to feel that way. I'd want you to feel cut off from everyone else because it's if it's just you, you're not as much of a threat. And that's when Harry starts to realize, like, shit, I really need my friends. Uh, that's when he goes back. I need an order of the uh, Phoenix. The army. Uh, he goes back to hang out with Hermione and Ron. Uh, outside, Professor McGonagall and Umbridge are getting <laughs> into it uh, about uh, Umbridge, Umbridge's uh, uh, disciplinary practices. Professor's like, you can't do this shit. And Umbridge is like, are you questioning me? Because if you're questioning me, you're questioning the ministry. Uh, and things are about to get a lot fucking worse at Hogwarts because I am taking the fuck over. And she orders Filch, who is more than happy to do this. And I love I love the character of Filch because he's like, yeah, fuck these kids. Uh, to put the first of the proclamations on uh, the wall outside of the Great Hall. This is Proclamation uh, Educational Decree number 23. Umbridge is named High Inquisitor of Hogwarts, which just sounds terrible. Uh, Dumbledore... Uh, is out. Uh, Fudge has given Umbridge power to address the seriously fallen standards of Hogwarts. She goes around keeping kids, and then we have a little montage. She's keeping kids from snogging. Might as well have played Strange Things from yeah, Toy exactly. Story. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> things <laughs> me. Uh, she's interviewing people. She tries to get Trelawney to, to predict something, and Trelawney just can't because she's she, such a it's, dick. It's sad. Uh, later that day, Cho tells Harry uh, they're kicking Trelawney out. All the students watch as Umbridge kicks her just to the curb, and she's like, "What? Well, what am I going to do with all this luggage?" And she's like, "I don't fucking care." You're useless. That's and so on this sad. point, I'm like, be honest, like keeping time, her around. She's right. She is useless. She's right. She's useless. Yeah. Yeah. The actresses are best friends in real life. Are they, they really? Across the street from each other. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. Uh, and this you scene, have, of course, like, lunches and stuff? very, very, yeah. very, very sad because she's Magical. like, Hogwarts has been my home for 16 years. Like, where am I going to go? Uh, and then Dumbledore comes in like a boss and is like, Please help her put her stuff back in. She's not leaving. And Umbridge is like, uh, you, I have the power to fire her. And he goes, yeah, but you know what? You don't have the power to kick her off the grounds. So she can stay as long as I want. And then Umbridge goes, not yet, but I will. And you're like, fuck, you know she's going to. Yeah. That was you a know good she's response gonna. on her side. She's like, not, not yet. yet. Uh, over the radio, we hear Fudge laying out all the disappearances that have been happening as of late. And he lays all that shit at Sirius Black's feet. Uh, Sirius comes to the fire again and tells him that Fudge doesn't want them learning anything because... He's afraid Dumbledore, or they're like, dude, no one's teaching us anything. We don't, we're not learning anything. And F and he's like, well, yeah, Fudge doesn't want that because he's afraid Dumbledore is going to put together his own army. And then Hermione gets the great idea. She's like, we should do that. That's a great idea. We should absolutely do that. Uh, Voldemort is out there, and we have to learn how to defend ourselves. Uh, they head out to Hodgemeade. Hogs Mead, uh, mm -hmm. where Hermione has assembled a group of kids, including Luna and Cho. Uh, Cho. Since Harry is the only person who's actually had any experience fighting the dark arts, they want him to teach them. And Harry's like, listen, man, this shit ain't like you think it is. Uh, they all run through what all the stuff Harry's done, like all his accolades, have he stopped everyone and all that really stuff. Cool. And then Harry stops him. He's like, this all sounds great when you say it like that. But the truth is, most of it was just pure dumb luck. And I always had help. Uh, facing this stuff in your life is, life is not like it is at school. Out there, when, you have, when you're when you your second away from being murdered or seeing one of your friends be murdered, shit gets motherfucking real. Mm -hmm. And they go, and, and he goes, you guys don't, you don't know what it's like. And they're like, but you do. And that's why. You got to teach us. We need your help. Hermione says Voldemort's name for the first time, yeah, which is a very, does. very powerful thing. It's fucking real, and it hits because she, you see her like I think said a bad word for a second, and then yeah. she says it, and it's just like, oh, the magic's gone. I said now the c word. We train, yeah, and the rest the of them mad c word. And yeah. as she says that, the students finally say get it, Andy. Say oh, it. it's scary. Just do it. Say it, it's Andy. Scary. Cornelius. <laughs> <laughs> so, all the students, of course, get the gravity of the situation. So one by one, they line up to sign up for Dumbledore's <laughs> army. Uh, uh, really quick here, just, yeah. uh, they they do this at the Hogshead, which is like kind of like the weird shady bar at the end of Hogsmeade. Mm. And uh, there's a kind of important descriptor of the bartender. Uh, all they really say is he looks familiar, but they can't place why he looks familiar. Mm. Uh, and, I'm just, and, and I'm just I'm just dropping that in there, just to uh, just got it. You're going to need, yeah. that. You're need that later. This is the one bar that doesn't need a, a field trip form. Mm. Mm. Well, no, like, uh, no, he got the field trip form from his, from his, his, his serious. Right. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, you'd yeah. think it would be null and void because yeah, the man's yeah. a wanted criminal, but whatever. Dumbledore, Dumbledore, Dumbledore gets Guys, it. Guys, you want to come try the, you want to try this marijuana for the first time? Let's, <laughs> let's get, get, much, <laughs> get in the jam, man. Uh, walking along the hallway, uh, of course, Umbridge knows that someone's up to something, so she tells Filch to make another decree disbanding all student organizations. Uh, walking along the hallway, um, Longbottom, Longbottom comes across a room that he's never seen before, and it's the room of requirement, mm. also known as the come and go room. 
which I thought was fun. You know Never why? About that you know why? Uh, it always appears when someone has need of it. It's brilliant. Uh, Hermione's like, "Good job, man! You found this room." And Longbottom's like, "I don't know. I had a plan." Again, hand. just another like J.K. Rowling, like forget what you know, like you know, if I get, just have a room. We need here. a secret room. Why it's, not? <laughs> it's like train. Hogwarts wants us to fight back, is what she says, and I like that. Uh, and then the Dumbledore army has their first training session. Neville sucks at Experianus. Uh Filch is trying to track the students coming going into the room, but he's just a complete moron. Uh, Harry teaches the team stupefy, uh, stunning stupefy. Nigel first, not bad. Then Ron versus Hermione, and they have a cute scene where Hermione Love just it. fucking owns his ass. Love and then Fred and George are like, "You're an idiot." He's like, "I let her do that." And they're like, mm, "You're tall. It's, you're, you're pretty and yeah, tall. It's fine. Stay tall." Um, and then the, the ladies get hungry, and then like chicken nuggets appear, and they're like, "Oh, it's the nuggets of wisdom." They appear whenever somebody's in need of whatever. Whatever, whatever. There's I'm, a scene. I'm in. There's a scene where um, they're explaining the rules of that room, mm. and Ron is like, "Oh, so if I need a toilet," and then I guess a toilet appears because Hermione's all like, "Oh, cool, Ron." Oh, and she's it's like, just like yeah. what a weird scene to not show the fucking toilet. Uh, <laughs> you know? no, she, she just makes a joke like, oh, that's really mature of you. Like and she kind of. And like, the, they do tease this actually in Goblet of Fire. There's like a dinner that they're all having. It's at the Yule Ball. And, oh, yeah. Uh, gr- uh, Dumbledore is like, yeah, like I would hate to learn all of the secrets about Hogwarts because it's like great to like learn random things. Like randomly, I needed to like go to the restroom and Walked boom, like a, a, like, a random, like a random room like popped up and had like. So I could relieve myself, and it was like it's a little little seeds being planted. But in reality, we know he would have just shit his pants and magic it away, <laughs> right? The flu network, right? J.K. Rowling, the poo Whatever network. You are. <laughs> uh, nice. nice. Woo! <laughs> Uh, uh, Dolores like, comment subscriber makes right? another degree a decree warning all students will submit to questioning about the illicit activities that have been happening uh, we see students pouring into her upstairs office as she's pouring them cups of tea presumably with uh, the Vera Veritas serum in it Veritas serum is that what it said uh, mm-hmm. the truth serum in it uh, worth noting that Harry is wearing a cardigan here again uh, which makes him uh, he, as he starts to progress through these scenes we start seeing him more in a prof- professorial role um he wants. He goes over to help Cho with a levitation spell, and man, oh man, is a lot he of things starting levitated. to get hot. Uh, Fred and George, <laughs> fuck Talking with Felch. Wiener, Kevin. No, I know. I just don't like him, Cho. Whoop. I don't see it. I see it in my dreams. Uh, Dolores has recruited Malfoy and his crew for the Inquisition Squad. Uh, Harry gives a rousing the speech. Inquisition to the Squad. Yeah. Not a good yeah. name. Not a good name. You know? <laughs> uh, he gives a rousing speech to the student. Every great witch and wizard in history has started out just like us. If they can do it, so can we. And then do we see Ginny just fucking taken to this like a fish to water. She just blasts the shit out of a dummy and turns it into ash. And then Neville finally gets the hang of Expelliarmus. And then it's holiday time. Uh, uh, and we're not meeting again until after the holidays. People are like, you know what, Harry? You're actually really good at this. And he's like, you know what? I am good at this. I should do this for a living. A cool fact here. Since the film would include wand dueling at an elite level, a specific wand choreographer, Paul Harris, who's actually a professional dance choreographer, was brought in to design the style and technique of this highly unorthodox way of fighting. The result consists of five basic spellcasting moves with each of the actors were then allowed to adapt slightly to fit their own character. So, for instance, Lucius Malfoy would have a very formal and somewhat stiff fighting style, while Sirius Black uses a snappy and more spontaneous street fight style. Hell yeah. Ah. They could have used that for part four, where it fucking Harry yeah. just right. <laughs> nobody but you had a problem you, with yeah. how he was. But he had a big Harry style. Is, Harry Styles, just stupid stance. It's core, you don't look core. core. The fucking dudes. He's, he's a little kid, dude. inept. He dude. was scared. He was about to die. I mean, I mean, he's a fifteen-year-old. Voldemort should have killed him, then, dude. Either way, if Ron and magic. <laughs> Hermione leave Harry uh, to go over to talk to Cho, uh, who is looking at a picture of Cedric that has uh, been paste, uh, taped to the mirror. Uh, Harry heard Umbridge gave her a particularly hard time the other day, and she said it's worth it. Learning all this makes me wonder if Cedric had known it. Um, and Harry's like, actually, Cedric did know all this stuff. He, he did, but just Voldemort was better. It's like a weird thing to say to her because yeah. it's like no matter what he was yeah, fucking like, ice. This is weird. Well, we just like, got too soon, not soon enough. It's all the things. Cho tells him that Harry is a really really good teacher. <laughs> She's never been able to sign anything before. Uh, and then she notices that they're standing underneath the mistletoe and. Like a big, a big thanks to the rumor requirement because you know that's that put that there. Yeah. Uh, Harry tells her that's probably full of nargles. Me, everyone, or, uh, I love this line. <laughs> and Cho's like, "Is that something that I should be aware of? Like, do you have how long have you had nargles? Are those things something that you can like cure with penicillin?" And Harry's like, "Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it." And then no, he's course, like, "I have no idea." Is what he's, yeah, he's like. like I, don't, I, don't, I love like, what's how, a nargle. He's like, yeah. "It's such a great comedic reply." Yeah, she's yeah, like, "What yeah. the hell's a nargle?" He's like, "I don't know. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just talking because <laughs> I'm like nervous and I'm kind of whatever." And then they share a kiss, and it's nice. And you see in the background, fucking on the photo. 
Uh, Cedric just being Cedric's like, just like yeah, I got that shit, dude. <laughs> you, think he's funny. Funny. Huh? you think he's for it? Oh, yeah. I think he's like, look, I'm dead, bro. Fuck, get it, bro. Get it's it. good. He's like, I'm hanging out with Morning Myrtle up, upstairs. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. <laughs> She's thirsty. Uh, later that night, Harry tells she, Ron. I mean, she was, dude. Yeah. And like, reminded me about not. the kiss. And he says it was really wet because she was crying, which was sad. Uh, and and then her mind, he's like, that's weird. And her mind is like, dude, weird. obviously she's going through a lot. She feels bad about Cedric. She she likes Harry, but she's probably conflicted about that. There's all this shit happening at the school. All this stuff's going on. Uh, and Ron says one person can't possibly feel all those emotions or they'd explode. And Hermione tells him that he's got the emotional range of a teaspoon. <laughs> so and then they all fucking laugh yeah. at Ron. Ron's like, yeah, you're right. Uh, uh, I'm dumb. <laughs> it's, 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 a, it's a scene that I think could have easily been cut and could have been shown up like you know in an extended scene with like a or an extended version or special scenes or whatever. What's the word I'm looking for? Special features. Yeah. Mm. But I'm glad they left it in because I I do think it shows a cool sort of chemistry between all of them and how they yeah. how they fuck around with each other. Yeah. You know. But it just like I I hate how dumb it just makes Ron seem. <laughs> like people can't feel that much. <laughs> but I also but I think more importantly though there is that now flirtation between Ron and Hermione where she can give him shit and he doesn't take offense to it and they're, they're starting to have that that level of a relationship. I don't see it at all. Really? I, mean, I know the spoilers of things for that. Mm. I do not see any hints at all. What? Uh, that the whole night, time, you just watch her, Hermione. She's super into it. I, I wish, I, I, you know, again, you have sort of hope for Harry and Hermione. No, you don't. You do, though. You do. No, that's a bad but then, But then she makes a line of like, well, I did notice that Cho was looking at you the whole time. Yeah. Like, that's yeah. one thing I noticed. And she's like kind of like excited about it. And you're kind of like, ah, oh, man. Yeah, that's the I, first yeah. real time where I'm like, all right, that's not They're a cutting thing. this off. They're yeah. just best friends. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But even though J.K. Rowling, after the fact, was like, "Yeah, we should have." Now she has no, no. Should have put her Hermione should have fucking married Victor Crumb. You know, he's jacked now. That night, Harry has a dream that Mr. Jack. Weasley was attacked in the Ministry in the Orb Room. Uh, they take him to Dumbledore, who asks if he was. He was like, "Were you standing next to the victim, or are you standing above the victim?" Which is an interesting thing. Uh, Harry thinks that he might have been. Like we get the the picture that Harry was actually in the, the attacker's eye, or mind or in their body. Uh, Dumbledore starts to give out orders to the portraits of the old headmasters. Make sure Arthur is found by the right people, which I thought was cool because mm. they can go from portrait to portrait, so the, the actual people in the portraits can go into other portraits in the ministry. And like, it's fucking awesome. I love that. It's concept. cool. Like wherever the portrait is, they can communicate with that other version of themselves. It's dope. such a cool touch. Love it. Uh, they talk about the thing Voldemort didn't want, uh, them, didn't have the first time around, and Dumbledore keeps ignoring Harry until Harry gets this flash of fucking rage that he wants to kill Dumbledore, and he's like, look at me, goddammit. And then he screams. Look at me. It's a quiet the voices in his beautiful coiffed head. Uh, Dumbledore s- uh, snaps to attention. And is like, w- he's like, what's, Harry's like, what's happening to me? Just then, Snape enters, uh, and he says, we can't wait, not even until morning. Otherwise, he'll be vul- we'll be vulnerable. So Snape takes Harry down to his lab. And, uh, there, let's see. Uh, oh, he's, and, he's, and explains to him, look, there's a connection between you and the Dark Lord's brain. Let's hope he doesn't know about it yet. If, if he does, he'll be able to control your mind. In the past, he's invaded the minds of a lot of his victims and shown them visions uh, uh, stuff that would torture them into madness. Uh, we get That's another hint of what happened to the Longbottoms. Uh, only after, well, actually, it's not a hint that happened a long time. Excuse me, I was wrong. Uh, only after he had had them begging for death, after he's extracted the last drop of agony, would he finally kill them? And Harry's like, all right, we'll start this shit. So Snape starts teaching him the art of occlumency. How uh, cool is all of this? It's, it's like Snape doing private lessons with Harry. Yeah. Dude. I don't like that he has to be a dick the entire time. Like when he's walking to his office, grab him by his arm. Yeah. And it's like, what? why? Well, I mean, just fucking walk that's, with that's him. That's just Maybe. setting up the character. Yeah. I mean, it, it, we already know that it's been set up, but they're yeah. just continuing and driving the point home. But I do appreciate that, like, yeah, like you're right, Tim. This is sort of Snape being like, look, I, I fucking, I know what has to happen. I know that this has to be done. And it's just cool that Snape's on board, you know? It's always, yeah, like Snape's the only one that can teach him. Uh, of course, he's going to attempt to penetrate Henry, Harry's mind, and Harry will attempt <laughs> to resist. Hey, his he words, not mine. He does his say words, that. He does say that very awkwardly. Uh, it's, to penetrate it doesn't go very, mind. very well. <laughs> penetrate. I, 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 again, like, the way he does the lesson is just like, I want to penetrate your mind. He's like, wait, what do I... If you, and yeah. it's just like, well, give him some it's like, heads dude, up. Get off of it. Uh, you won't have a heads up. <laughs> it's Christmas time at the Black Household where uh, Mr. Uh, so Weasley is there. Right, here we go. And he's Christmas. a little worse for the wear, but he's like, hey, man. Uh, Mr. Weasley hands out presents, which includes one for Harry. Uh, and he gives a toast to Harry without who he would not be there. Uh, and Sirius raises a glass as well. And then you notice how weird Mrs. Weasley gets in this one where she's like, all right, everybody talk to daddy. And she, she said daddy like seven times. Oh, yeah, she's like, <laughs> it was not fucking this. creepy. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Harry, what's it? I forget. Uh, I made a note here, um, Barrett. Wasn't there a point 
I think we've already passed in the books where Harry gets a present that's like an ugly sweater and it's made they made a point that it's his first ever Christmas present. Well, that was I in think the he first gets it one. from Miss Weasley. Yeah, that was in the first yeah, one. That was, that was, that was one? yeah, that was Sorcerer's Stone. Yeah. She, okay. she makes a, a sweater for him every year, like that's she right. does yeah. the, the rest And Ron's of like, kids. "It's ugly," and he's like, "I love it. It's the best thing I've ever gotten because yeah. no one's ever yeah. gotten me a present before." Right. I can't remember if that was actually he, usually, in the movie he gets or not. like socks and soaps. Yeah, like the the Dursleys will always yeah. give him like just the worst fucking. It's so like a toothbrush that he can make a shiv and he can stab Dudley. There's something about this scene that like everything Mrs. Dudley does is so creepy. It's off putting. Well, it's off putting because yeah. she's doing that thing that moms do where she's like, everything's fine. Everything's yeah, fine. Yeah, like, yeah, everything's yeah. not fine. Well, He's fucked it. up. Yeah. And like the, the world is not in a good place right now. Uh, <laughs> Ron opens his gift and she's like, it's exactly what you wanted. And it's like, all right, chill out, mom. Yeah, they're trying to convince you. Uh, Harry once again rented a creature uh, and then Sirius sends him away. Turns out uh, this is Sirius's parents' house. This is where he grew up. Uh, he offered it to Dumbledore as HQ. Uh, and then we go through his family tree, which is uh, painted on the wall or his wallpaper on the wall, uh, which includes uh, his d- deranged cousin, Bellatrix Lestrange. Uh, his mom, of course, he, he reveals his mom, of course, burned his picture off of the wall after he ran away. Uh, and he's like, he was a charming woman. I was only 16 when that happened, and she basically completely fucking burned me out of her existence. Um, and, and and Harry asked him, he's like, well, when you, were, when you ran away when you were 16, where'd you go? And he goes, your dad's. I was always welcome at the Potters. And I think that's really, really cool. Really cool. Uh, and he's like, you know, you two are really a lot alike. And Harry's like, I'm not sure. Uh, he's like, when we saw Mr. Weasley get attacked, I think I was the snake. Uh, and then back in Dumbledore's office, I wanted to kill Dumbledore. And he's like, what if I'm becoming more like Voldemort? What if after everything that's happened, something inside of me has gone wrong um, and I'm going bad? And Sirius tells him again, just to back up the point that was uh, that we learned from the very first Harry Potter. Sirius tells him, it's not, the world ain't black and white, man. We've all got both light and dark inside of us. What matters is the part we choose to act on. That's who we really are. Of course, uh, Dumbledore told him that back in the day, too. He's like, you chose to be Gryffindor. Your choices make a difference in this. Although, you know, we're all badasses. This is just how we choose to use that. Uh, Hermione interrupts to tell them it's time to go. Uh, Sirius tells him, when this is all over, we'll be a proper family. And they hug. Uh, and then we, we end the scene on a, just a very subtle bit of uh, foreshadowing with Sirius's burned out face on the thing. You're like, oh, this is not going to go well for him no. toward the end, sadly. Uh, springtime, Harry. Leaves. Before we get to springtime, oh, though, Nick, oh, oh. let me tell you that this episode is brought to you by Postmates. Andy. How often do you use Postmates? Oh my god, way too often, Yeah. Dad. What do you get with that Postmates? I always get the house special. Mm-hmm. The house special, <laughs> no matter where it is. When you need red wine at 4 p.m., Gia. Sushi at 9 p.m., Joey. A breakfast burrito at 8 a.m., Kevin. And yeah. ibuprofen at 10 a.m. Hey, you know what? Me. Why I was going to say chicken katsu you curry. You can Postmate it. Postmates is your personal food delivery, grocery delivery, whatever kind of delivery service all year round. Anything that you are craving, Postmates can deliver. They're the largest on-demand network in the United States and offer delivery from all of the restaurants, grocery and convenience stores, and traditional retailers you could possibly want or need. It's 24 hours a day, 365 days a year service. Postmates will bring you what you need within an hour. No more trips to the store. You don't even need to know where the store is. Wow. Postmates will deliver anything to you. I love that bit. That's a good bit there. Mm -hmm. Uh, Download the app for iOS or Android for free. Browse local restaurants and businesses and track your delivery in real time. For a limited time, Postmates is giving listeners $100 of free delivery credit for your first seven days. To start your free deliveries, download the app and use code KINDAFUNNY. That's code KINDAFUNNY for $100 of free delivery credit for your first seven days when you download the Postmates app. Anything you need? Anytime you That's need. That's an awesome deal. No joke. Postmate it. Yeah, yeah. man. <laughs> uh, download Postmates and save with the code kind of funny. K I N D A F U N N Y. Also, shout out to HelloFresh. HelloFresh is America's number one meal kit. You get easy seasonal recipes and pre-measured ingredients delivered right to your door. All you have to do is cook and enjoy. HelloFresh makes cooking delicious meals at home a reality, regardless of your comfort in the kitchen. You can say goodbye to endless grocery store trips and takeout food. HelloFresh has you covered. You can break out of your dinner rut with HelloFresh's 20-plus seasonal chef-curated recipes each week. Uh, Jessica Alba now has some curation there, too. So if you want to eat like the Alba, you could. Angel. Um, there's something for everyone, from family recipes to calorie smart and vegetarian <laughs> and fun menu series like Hall of Fame and Kraft Burgers. Dark Angel. Dark Angel. Dark Angel. Dark Angel. Not Angel. Angel. <laughs> <laughs> Not Angel. It's like the Buffy the Vampire spinoff. Oh, man. You can add extra meals to your weekly order as well as yummy add-ons like garlic bread and cookie dough. Easily change your delivery days, food preferences, and skip a week whenever you need to. Gia's making some cherry balsamic pork chops with garlic herb couscous and roasted broccoli this week. The food's Dude, so nice they named it twice. 
What's up? The food's so nice, they named it that's, twice. That's how you do it, man. Uh, for $80 off your first month at HelloFresh, go to HelloFresh.com slash Morning80 and enter Morning80. That is, get $80 off your first month of HelloFresh. Go to H-E-L-L-O-F-R-E-S-H dot com slash M-O-R-N-I-N-G-8-0. <laughs> And enter morning 80. Uh, it's like receiving eight meals for free. You're going to want to do that. You missed some gold. Thank there. you. <laughs> I, I'll go back and watch oh the Oh, my episode. God. That was really funny. Angel. The I, didn't, I, I looked I at you like, immediately because I was like, I did not get that right. <laughs> I was like, is that just a couple years? <laughs> <laughs> it felt that way. <laughs> You're like, Jessica Alba, what an angel. <laughs> yeah, I, was I was like, like angel, Jessica Alba. She has a cure angel. I looked at Kevin. I was like, I, no. I, I couldn't tell if you were doing like a Phantom Menace joke. <laughs> Dark and you, Angel. She had yeah. that show, Dark Angel. Didn't she also dress like an angel in uh, Idle Hands? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. There we go. Yeah, That's yeah, why yeah, I said yeah. angel. She did. There. That's why yeah, I said it. Go. It's a good scene. Speaking of beautiful angels, oh my God. back to the plot. Uh, Hagrid's back, baby. And, and Harry's <laughs> yeah, like, dude, and Harry's like you know what? Cho, I got I to gotta peace out because my boy Hagrid's back. Mm-hmm. We got to figure out what's going on. <laughs> he's so stoked. It's like, Man, damn, very dude. Stoked. But when they get hosts. there, uh, Umbridge is interrogating him as to where he has been. And Hagrid lies and tells her he's been away for his health. You know, a bit of fresh air. And she says, you know, yeah, I guess as gameskeeper, must be hard getting fresh air. Um, that must be difficult. Uh, she says, don't bother unpacking, which leaves a very, uh, and leaves very happy with herself. Even going as far as spraying a little bit of perfume on Harry's or Hagrid's shack because it's stinky. It's uh, uh, Hagrid lays it down for the kids. Dumbledore sent Hagrid to parlay with the giants to convince them to join the cause because the Death Eaters were there too, uh, trying to them to get uh, to join Voldemort's team uh, outside. There's a storm coming, a literal and figurative storm coming, uh, and then we get I, what I think is just the coolest, awesome, one of the coolest dude. scenes. Really where cool. Where we fight, we we, we uh, catch up with where Bellatrix Bellatrix Lestrange is. She's been held in Azkaban, and she's like in one of the cool like Azkaban prison guards that we saw Sirius wearing in Prisoner of Azkaban. And then just the fucking wall gets blown out, and then we see. Azkaban, just this. We cool, finally like, see Azkaban. Yeah, we oh, see the pyramid. Around. Like it's like this uh, triangle, triangle like, building, prison building, fortress, prison thing. fortress in the middle of an ocean, and part of it has just been blown apart. And then Bellatrix just like screams and cackles as she's laughing oh, so and realizing good. that she's being broken out. It's like the raft, and it's played by um, yeah. Helen Bonham Carter, who is fucking awesome in everything so she does. Good. Uh, 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 Everybody's looking at their dark mark. Everybody's looking at him like she licks hers. Yeah, it's like sexy ah, but weird. Yeah, like, I like it. Worth yeah. noting that uh, Hagrid was a little beat up as well. Uh, Seamus comes to apologize, and he's like, "Man, we read the prophet. It's just, just not adding up." And I'm sorry, man. I believe you now. And Harry's like, "You're fucking dead to me. Go suck on an egg." You son of a bitch. Uh, in the room of requirement, Harry and Neville chat about what's happening, what happened to his parents. Uh, they have a nice little touching scene where he's like, Bellatrix Lestrange has escaped uh, from prison. Uh, guess what? 14 years ago, she used the Cruciatus curse to torture my parents uh, for info and basically torture them crazy. And Neville's like, I'm not really um, ready for everyone to know that, but I do want you to know that I'm proud to be their son. And Harry says, you know what? We'll make your parents proud, Neville. Like, we're going to. We're going to make him proud, which is a good little scene. Uh, later that day, t- Harry teaches, starts teaching the Patronus charm. Uh, and it turns out Harry's just a better teacher than Lupin all around because he teaches everyone how to do a Patronus very, very quickly. He says, of course, there's two levels. Uh, one is just a, a shield and the other one is a full blown Patronus. And one by one, the kids start mastering this, uh, which is really, really hard. One of the kids is like, well, you could do that. And he's I like, did Fuck not yeah, know where you're going to go with that, Nick. What? When you said master, <laughs> like, I just like my mind just assumes. <laughs> what are these kids doing? <laughs> <laughs> they just started <laughs> This is what I just showed you. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? Why don't you clean it up a little bit? Okay, this is a kid series. Uh, Hermione, of course, produces some sort of like otter. What, what's her Patronus, Barry? Yeah, it's an yeah, otter. It's, it's an otter. otter. It's a cute little otter. It's dope. Uh, Ron has a hound, and Luna has a little rabbit. Uh, turns out, Harry, yeah, great t shirt. Knocking this out of the fucking water. Like, just crushing this until, of course, the wall gets blown apart. And we look through and we see Umbridge. She's this like, I got fucking this. fucking bitch, dude. Yep. Hey, have we. I, I, we must have talked about it at some point, but like, it's not until now, really, that I'm understanding this whole Patronus thing, like, fully. Have we talked about Kevin being a manatee? <laughs> no, no. Kevin's Patronus is a manatee? No, no. no. It's, it's, it's not, not what you are. At, at Alexis's wedding, <laughs> we were all assigned Fucking. things. I didn't know what this meant. Okay. Now I do. But Kevin was given the manatee. Yep. No, no. That's like the... An- what is it called? Fuck. Animagus? No, uh, no, no. no. Well, it's, that's it's, worse. It's, <laughs> it was your spirit animal. Mm. Uh, and the bitch that does this for uh, Alexis saw him picture was like, he's fat. Give him a manatee. <laughs> I hate this woman. <laughs> so yeah, that's been a, that's been an ongoing thing. Tim, I have to, uh, for next week, I want you to report. Uh, oh, yeah. oh, yes, thank oh, God. God. I was wondering. Oh, look, Porty's here too, with a little cape. Hi, Port Port. You mean Dobby? <laughs> oh, it's Dobby. I'm sorry. Dobby, I'm Professor McGonagall. I kind of like Dobby. Dobby. 
You're scaring him. He's fine. Don't worry. So as long as he's not hairy. As you know, for Dobby to be free, he was needed to be given clothing. Luckily, at a show in Seattle called Pax West, a young man on Twitter, YKM, his Twitter handle very hard to explain to Professor McGonagall, made this milk mommy bandana. Yeah. If found, call 1-800-STOP-CALLING-ME! Oh, he's scared. You no, it's his freedom scary. now! <laughs> he's scared. He has Dobby Freedom, Andy! <laughs> Do you watch these movies? God damn it. Dobby Freedom! I explained to you you're not allowed to use the Elder Wand when you're doing this because you might break it. Someone has misplaced my normal ping pong wand! Oh. And this is the one I will use! It's on the ground! Porty pieced out so fast. <laughs> he wants no I mean, you know why the points is I always do! Professor McGonagall! <laughs> yeah. 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 Known to laugh like that. <laughs> Professor McGonagall. <laughs> Lot of scenes the first few weeks just last night. Now Professor like, McGonagall was flying in on a broomstick from yeah. Seattle, also so she hasn't flight. gotten to watch this at all. Okay. But what she saw on the internet was something very special. <laughs> Tim Geddes, I am awarding you and Slytherin fifteen points for your excellent. Fashion. <laughs> I've too. often said it kind of funny. Oh, no. There are not enough oh, overweight, bearded white men in thick black flame glasses. Yeah. And I am excited <laughs> to see it now because you look delicious. They're yeah. blue. Professor They're blue. McGonagall. They're blue. Like, it doesn't show on camera, jackasses. All right, it's midnight blue. It doesn't show. It does. Just like his, just like his blonde hair doesn't show as much mm -hmm. as it should either. Yeah. My dark Don't brown break hair. that wand. I'm being very it's, careful with it, Kevin! I, uh, there's a lot of it's problems! Kevin! Also, maybe time to wash the costume. Maybe! Yes, oh, up. is it bad? <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. That seems like too far. No. 15 points! To Slytherin! Yeah! God Good job, man. Professor Thank McGonagall, you. everybody. Thank you. Professor McGonagall. Oh, my it's, God. I thought I would have gotten 15 points for my video I'd recorded at CVS. Did you see my video at CVS? No, he was flying. I was in the magazine section. And I was just looking, and there was a Time uh, magazine dedicated to Harry Potter mm. and the, the importance of Harry Potter. And it was just me looking at the magazines, and I went, Expelliarmus! Mm. And I did it really loud in the CVS know. and hoped that nobody heard me, but I think they did. Do you ever go home at the end of a really busy day, and you turn the volume up on your TV, and then you come back into the room, and you're like, why is that so loud? Because your ears have readjusted to the quiet. That's what's happening to me right now. Yeah, it's, it was yeah. so loud. So loud. Yeah. Also, something is beefy in that costume. Yeah, there is a beefy entry. Yeah. It, 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 it might be time. It might be time to shit. I don't want points off of Ryan's guy. He's not listening anymore. After he's done with his thing, Greg goes on to the next thing. He's not paying attention to what we're doing. I don't know that man. Prince Forty was so scared. Oh my God, it was really he sad. He was so cute though. God. Also, I was cute. really scared for that one. <laughs> I, I thought Porter was going to piss everywhere. I was kind of worried. I'm glad he didn't. Back to the plot. Harry looks through the hole in the wall, and it's none other than Umbridge. And Umbridge uses, she's like, I got this. And she uses Bombarda Maxima and just blows the wall apart, uh, at which time we see that they've got Cho Chang, and she's like clearly ratted them out. And Harry's like, what the fuck, dude? We made out. What's up, Cho? We made out, Cho. Back up What's in Cho? Dumbledore. I found your wetness. Uh, up in Dumbledore's office, uh, Cornelius yeah, Fudge is there. <laughs> She said uh, she's a little wet. And they're accusing Dumbledore of moving against the ministry. And he's like, you know what? I, I, and Harry's like, it was my fault. And Dumbledore's, nope, it was me. I ordered them to uh, to make an army. And after all, the list does say Dumbledore's army, not Potter's army. And Harry's like, fuck, you got me on that one. I yeah. didn't think about that one. I totally figured <laughs> my it out. Uh, he's like, I told Harry to form the army because I'm moving against the ministry. And they're, and they're like, well, that, that was easy. And Umbridge is like, you're going to be arrested. And you will await trial and ask a man. And this is where we get the coolest line in the entire series, ladies and gentlemen. Don't even bother watching uh, movies 6, 7, or 7.5. Because he looks her in the eye and says, you seem to be laboring under the delusion that I'm going to, uh, what was the phrase? Come quietly. I have no intention of going to Azkaban. Woo. And just then, the phoenix, Fox the phoenix flies in. And as he flies overhead, he claps his hand and just, pfft, it's gone. gone. All right. And then we get Shackable, who you know is one of his homies. He just gives that little dig to Cornelius Fetcher. He's like, hey, man. I know you don't like him, but you can't deny. He's got style. <laughs> I didn't like, like that line. I didn't really? like it either. Oh, I yeah. loved it. I thought it was, he was weirdly right. racist. It was, yeah. yeah. It was just weirdly oddly placed. But it was just out of place for me. It was just like, oh, that's kind of Well, weird. I just like that they give Shaq a bullet something cool to say because he's a cool character. Uh, Filch. He makes uh, this look good is what he should have said. Yeah. Men in black. Uh, <laughs> of course, Filch puts up another decree on the wall. This one reads, Umbridge has replaced Dumbledore as headmaster. And then we get a, a scene of Filch happily taking down all of the paintings from the staircase. Uh, and they're all, all the guy, like, he tips them over and they all fall out of it, which I thought was kind of Jerk. funny. He's like, and he's like delighting in their, in their dismay. Uh, detention time. Umbridge watches all the students endure her writing torture, uh, except Cho Chang, who waits outside for Harry. Uh, uh, Hermione and Ron take the blame. Uh, 
but Harry puts it on himself. Maybe it's just better that I go at this alone. Of course, uh, Cho tries to talk to Harry. Harry's like, get the fuck away from me. You rat us out. Uh, Hagrid attempts to take them all into the Dark Forest where they encounter a herd of centaurs. Uh, the Ministry has been restricting their territory so much that they're gonna, there's going to be an uprising soon if they keep screwing with them. Um, with Dumbledore gone, Hagrid's like, look, I'm probably going to get the sack next, so I need you guys to take care of someone for me. Meet my half-brother, Groppy. How is the CG as bad as it as I have the no giant idea. in Sorcerer's Stone? This is really bad in this. A lot of the effects really, are actually pretty really bad in this movie. Bad. Like, really astonishingly bad for, you know, the, I mean, the fact that we had, we saw a hippogriff in Azkaban, and it looked fantastic. This just looked like, I don't know if it was it being placed in the world. I think it was just the overall look of the thing and how just kind of comic and cartoony it looked. It was yeah. awful. Dumb, oh, the centaurs I thought looked okay, but this one looked bad. Of course, Grappy picks up Hermione and she lays down the law. Ron tries to save her. He just gets kicked aside and she's like, hey, put me down. And it turns out that Groppy's not a bad uh, guy altogether. He just needs a firm Curious. hand. Yeah, he just seems like a mother. Groppy is his name? Mm-hmm. No, his name is Grop. Uh, Hagrid calls him Groppy. It's like a Got term of like a little pet name. Yeah. Yeah. But like close enough. Like I was just, yeah. I never caught that. Yeah. Uh, the kids, of course, promise to look after him because Hagrid uh, is the only family he's got. And Harry remembers seeing his parents in the mirror of uh, Erised. Uh, but this time, Snake interrupts. Oh, he's in his head again. It's a memory uh, back in Occlumency class. You're just like your father, lazy, arrogant, weak. And he's like, I'm not weak. And then and he's like, well, improve it. Discipline your mind. And he's like, life isn't fair. Your father knew that. And Harry's like, my father was a great man. Your father. And he's like, your father was a swine. And then Harry goes, what guy does the spell, which I tried to look up, but couldn't figure out what the fuck it was. And then flips the script and goes into Snape's memory. And it turns out, no, um, it was, no, like, it was pro- like a reversal spell. Yeah, it's like a. Like I think I back. think it was like Protego or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. it was Protego. It's a shield. That's what it was. That makes sense because I, I was trying to look up the the. the uh, yeah. Harry, of course, goes into Snape's mind for a second and sees uh, an, a memory of his father being just a complete shithead. Love to Snape. this bully. And you're like, what the fuck? And it turns out like uh, that's not depth, cool, man. That's yeah. not cool. Is mm-hmm. that why Snape hates him? Crazy. Yeah. Will we figure that out later in the movies? Love it. Maybe. It's good oh, shit. No. It's, fine. it's like the there opposite it of my walking yeah, it, yeah, I saw yeah. you walking was coming. That was such a great call. Yeah. Snape, uh, of course, snaps uh, Harry out of his mind. Snapes. And then he goes, you know what? Fuck you. We're done. We're not doing this anymore. And Harry's like, no, man. Really? Like, I'm not sure of him. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, well, we have a great chance here. Like, I didn't know my dad was a dick. We could totally bond and be like friends. And Snape's like, get the fuck. Get the fuck out, Mr. Potter. Mr. Potter, get out. Well, well, well. Well, 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 Mr. Potter. Get out of my okay, room. You, you got it. The first one was straight up Palpatine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Harry sees Fred and George helping a small Gryffindor through the pain of Umbridge's detention uh, methods. Uh, she interrupts the fuck with them one more time, and Fred and George are like, you know what? We've had enough of this shit. And uh, they get the great line where Fred's like, you know, I've been thinking that our future lies outside the realm of academic achievement. And George is like, you know what? I've been thinking the same thing. Uh, so during the owls, uh, Umbridge goes to investigate a sound outside uh, the hallway and just gets bamboozled by Fred and George as they uh, they kick by her on broomsticks, uh, kicking up all sorts of havoc and shit with fireworks spells. Uh, they finish off Umbridge with a giant dragon that destroys all of the decrees posted outside of the Great Hall. This in the book is so fucking cathartic when this happens. So much cool in the book. Because yeah. Fred and George just, I don't know if you g- understand the gravity of this, but Fred and George basically like have lit their entire academic career on fire and just leave Hogwarts. Uh, and then of course as they're leaving on brooms, the kids go out to cheer and we see a giant W in the sky. Like, all right. And I'm like, Baller. Good for you guys. Baller. I have mixed feelings on this scene because half of it is very cathartic and awesome and half of it's just like corny and weird like in a way that I feel like this movie so far hadn't been. Huh. Like when the dragon kind of comes and takes over and she's like running away. Yeah, it's like Fellowship it, of the Ring. Yeah. It's yeah. very yeah. like like, uh, yeah, like magic shit. Like you know it's not going to affect you. Like you're an adult. You've been yeah. here. You've been yeah. here. Yeah. You know this. Yeah, the Kids have scars in their hands right now. Yeah. <laughs> the, the way they leave is a little different. Like, they do the fireworks at one point in the book, but how they're, like, they're kind of, like, final, like, thing is they basically make an entire swamp on, like, one of the floors, and it, like, it they can't, like, fix it. And so, uh, yeah, they, like, kind of get, like, ran out, and they, like, even advertise of, like, ah, it's, uh, uh, we, we now, the, you can order, like, our products. We are Weasley's Wizard Wheezes or something like that. And uh, they... Uh, so, basically, they left, yeah. they left academia to start their company yeah. and did it with a bang. Good but for that. if they left the school without graduating, wouldn't they have, like, get, lost their wands? Steve Steve Jobs. Uh, well, like, uh, uh, seventh year <laughs> is optional, and seventh it's year, optional. Yeah, seventh year is only you need to go for like specific, um, uh, fucking like job careers. Yeah, 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 if you want to go into be an or. Uh, 
Amidst the celebration, of course, Harry faints. He sees another vision of Sirius, this time being uh, tortured by Voldemort. Uh, Voldemort needs that prophecy. Harry sees the orb once again through the tortured screams of Sirius and then recognizes the door. Uh, He's seen that door before, the door uh, through which the orb is being stored. Uh, It was the one where Cornelius Fudge and Lucius Malfoy were talking in front of uh, before his trial. Hermione, of course, smartly is like, dude, this is totally a trap. Like, we know that he's got a connection so to your brain. Voldemort could be doing putting this in there. And Harry goes, either way, I can't take the, the chance of serious in trouble. I need to go save him. Like, one or the other. Touche, Voldemort. Uh, they had, they're like, well, how are we going to get into the ministry? There's only one chimney in the entire uh, entirety of Hogwarts that's unsurveyed. Uh, that's not being surveilled, uh, which is Umbridge's uh, chimney. It's like, cool, we'll just head up there. Um and uh, Harry once again tries to let the kids. He's like, "Hang back, everyone! This is all I got to do this." And then Hermione says, "When are you going to realize we're all in this together?" We and of do. course, unfortunately, Umbridge was standing right behind them. And she's like, "Well, uh, that you are, and I'm, now I've got you guys." Uh, Umbridge has caught them with the help of Malfoy and the Inquisitive crew. Uh, she calls Snape, who comes in to tell her that all of the uh, Veritas serum has been used up. You used the last of, wit, of it, if I'm not mistaken, on Cho Chang. And Harry's like, "Fuck! Oh, if I'd just listened known. to her." We could still be making out. Snogging! Before Snape Move can on. leave, though, Harry passes him <laughs> a, very, a very, very subtle message. Uh, he just screams out, he's got Padfoot at the place where it's hidden. And everyone's like, well, that's cryptic as fuck. Obviously, Snape is in the know. Now I can't trust him anymore. I love that's, that Snape's just like, I have no idea what the fuck he's talking yeah, I about. I have no idea. <laughs> uh, Snape plays dumb and leaves Harry to be tortured to death in a room full of cats. Uh, yeah, I gotta, I, gotta, I gotta go real quick. Uh, as this is an, <coughs> an issue for the ministry, uh, 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 Umbridge takes it up a notch. Says, as this is an issue of uh, ministry security, I'm going to use the, the Cruciatus curse on you. And, and uh, Hermione's like, that's illegal. And she's like, well, uh, the ministry doesn't know. But Fudge doesn't her. know and then puts his like portrait down so he yeah. can't see. Uh, Hermione, of course, thinks fast and she says, tell him, tell him where Dumbledore's secret weapon is. And they're like, what the fuck are you talking about? Of course, that secret weapon. Uh, they take Umbridge out to the Dark Forest. But also, like, she slapped the shit out of him. Oh, yeah, she slapped him. <laughs> 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 I'm like, what? Takes him out of the forest and she's like, there is no secret weapon. They look down and they see the broken, the snapped off uh, uh, rope for where Grappy used to be held. And she's like, there is no weapon, is there? You guys are just stalling for time. That's when the centaurs come in and they're like, yo, we don't like you. You're the one that causing us all this trouble and restricting our lands. And then uh, they start shooting arrows at her and she just owns their fucking asses, proving that they are, she is way more powerful than these centaurs are, even though they're magical creatures. She wraps the rope around one of their neck and starts uh, strangling it. And thankfully, Grappy comes in finally and was like, hey, I'm back and just picks her ass up and is like, I'm going to eat your face like I'm a titan. And I'm just gonna eat you. And then uh, all that's that's the uh, a little bit of leeway that the centaurs need to go and, and uh, grab her. And they subdue her and they carry her off. And as they carry her off, she says uh, she screams to Harry for help. She says, "Tell them, uh, tell them, uh, I, I'm uh, let's mean see. them no harm. Yeah, tell them I mean them no harm." And and Harry, of course, echoes her other words and says, "I must not tell lies." Yeah. And let them just presumably carry her off and just fucking destroy her. Yeah. I'm assuming my in my in my brain, I'm like they're gonna just like draw and quarter her, just like rip her apart limb by limb. Yeah. But I think they actually don't do that much to her. No, uh, they don't do anything. They don't, no. No, wait, but they do. She ends up going to St. Mungo's. Yeah, I think they like, drive yeah. her nuts. Well, they end up, like, she ends up getting arrested or whatever. Like, it shows in that, in the paper. No, nah, she just gets end. fired. That's oh, God. But I guess, like, I, I would have expected the stories to be, like, teachers missing. <laughs> like, we found her remains <laughs> in the <laughs> <Everybody> <laughs> like, <liked> her. <laughs> uh, Harry and the crew uh, meet back up with the rest of the guys, uh, Neville and uh, and Luna and Ron, who have outsmarted the Inquisi- uh, Inquisitors with some fun candy. Uh, Harry once again tells him he's got to do this alone, and Neville tells him that Dumbledore's army uh, is about doing something real. You don't have to do this all yourself. How, and then they're like, how are we going to get to London? And he's like, well, we'll just fly, of course. Uh, they take the Thestrals, which are every bit as terrifying in daylight as they are at night. Why um, not just go back to the flu network? Like they were about to do that. Now, presumably because the inquisitors are there and like, but they're we'll like stop poisoned them. or get the brooms. I don't know. You know? It's cooler this way. I, yeah, because we have to tie the festivals back in. They, they, they make a point about the brooms in the books. Uh, at one point during oh, a Quidditch, in a Quidditch match, uh, Harry and Fred and George like all get like permanently banned by Umbridge for playing uh, from playing Quidditch and because like there's the like thunderbolt. this huge fight and she's like oh I'm punishing you guys but not the Slytherins and shit like they that. They should have just used the bloopity goopity spell to mm-hmm. m- magically teleport yep. them. Good point. 
Forget everything. Maybe they can't run the back. They can't operate. Maybe they could. They're too young. They don't no, but this isn't Eagles, operation. Huh? This is a different Spooky spell, dude. That we just haven't heard idiot. of. Yeah. Uh, they head to Read London. Pottermore, dude. And again, kindoffunny.com <laughs> slash events for that detail. When we're going to head to London. Uh, the kids head to the Department of Ministry. Just walk right in, which I thought was interesting. And approach the door uh, Harry's been dreaming about. Again, absolutely love the set design here. Uh, the kids enter into this room full of orbs, which is cool. And then when they look back, the door's just standing there by itself. Nothing behind it. Nothing in front of it. It's just a door. Um, they start uh, uh, looking through all the orbs. Uh, Harry heads to 95 and sees that nothing's there. No serious, nothing. Uh, Neville interrupts him. He's found the orb that has Harry's name on it. Uh, Harry grabs it and hears Trelawney's voice. Uh, quote, the one with the power to vanquish the Dark Lord approaches, and the Dark Lord shall mark him as his equal, but shall not have the power, uh, but he shall have power the Dark Lord knows not, uh, for neither can live while the other survives. And then Hermione calls out down the hall, a Death Eater approaches. It's Lucius Malfoy. He does a cool thing where he takes the mask off. Seemed like a dumb move. Keep your mask he on. He doesn't you know? give a fuck, man. He's done now. He thinks they're going to win. Uh... Down the hall, uh, Luthma, and he said, "You really should learn the difference between dreams and reality." Obviously, that, yeah, that was just totally a thing that uh, a vision him. that Voldemort put in his brain. Uh, you saw what the Dark Lord wanted you to see. Hand over the prophecy, and Harry threatens to break it until Bellatrix comes in and says, "This kid knows how to play the game." Uh, this puts Neville on high alert, and he's like, "I'm going to kill her." Um, and Harry's like, "Wait a minute, why did Voldemort need me to come get this? Why couldn't you do it?" Turns out, uh, you can't. Only a prophecy can get it can be retrieved by the person for which it was about. Uh, which is interesting. And then the kids realize that they are surrounded uh, by Death Eaters uh, and they start just fighting their way out. They're like, cool, we're going to stupefy these guys. And for a second, it looks like, hey, they're actually holding their own uh, until uh, Ginny, until they start getting overwhelmed and then Ginny uh, shoots a spell out and just collapses the entire room around them. That's a that big she's, spell. Dude, she's a yeah. bad. That, that was the same spell she used to blow up that... Uh, uh, dummy in the... Yeah. In the, yeah. Uh, very, very good at that one. Uh, they run Reducto. through the door. Uh, they all run through the doors. The <laughs> room is collapsing around them. Uh, but this time they go through the door and then they don't go back into the hallway. They fall into a giant room uh, at the center of which there is an empty archway that has sort of like a mysterious like. And uh, only some people curtain. can hear voices. And only some people can hear voices, which is interesting. Uh, of course, the Death Eaters were only kind of placating the kids. They all swarm them in that cool like black like yeah. <laughs> like arrival smoke. Uh, well, and then it was when cool Har- that they were also like grabbing them at that moment. Yeah. yeah. And then when Harry gets to his feet, he looks up and each one of his friends has been grabbed and uh, is now being held hostage by one of the Death Eaters. Um, Lucius laughs and is like, you stupid kids. You don't stand a fucking chance. You know what the hell you're doing with your stupefies and your mummifies and your levitates and your Wingardiums. We're way past that shit, bro. We're beyond it, bro. But to be fair, we're in the major all, like, leagues right all now. The, like, ad- most of the adults are like beaten up, bleeding. And yeah. So, like, they, they did, took a they couple did, cuts. Yeah, they, they, yeah, there's sure. that one dude with the beard that got fucked up yeah. a little bit. Uh, of course, Harry's like, fine, uh, you got me. Touche. He hands it over. Uh, but bef- as he does that, uh, Lucius turns around and who does he see? Serious Black. And he's like, get away from my grandson. And just. Instead of using his wand, just fucking punches him right in the face, oh, yeah. which is great. But I did. I, this moment wasn't as cool as I wanted it to be. What? Uh, oh, that I wasn't as cool. But the second, the thing that happens afterward, is the dopest moment that's just happened in this movie it. so far. All of the auras start coming in, riding fucking waves of white light. Yeah, yeah. that shit's cool. And it cool. is dope. And they kick off the scene, and they just start blowing each other up to smithereens. And it's the coolest fucking wizard fight we've ever seen in our lives. With the exception of like Malfoy getting shot, where he goes. Right before. Uh-huh. It's like, why? They blow <laughs> everyone away. Protect yourself. Uh, it looks like they're actually doing well. Uh, Sirius has an interesting, like, a great line here that I thought was very, very touching where he says, good one, James. Oh, Just so mistaking good. his son for, it's, uh, for his It's friend. one of the very few things the uh, movie actually added that the book didn't have. Really? Uh, that yeah. theme is in the book, but, like, that line was never said. So that line like is so it's funny. Really cool. It's, it's yeah. heartbreaking. Yeah. Of course, it is right before. Of course, bittersweet because as they start to get the upper hand, uh, Bellatrix Lestrange comes out of the shadows and hits Sirius with the Avada Kedavra curse that knocks him back into the archway and he disappears, presumably dead. Uh, he's carried away into uh, whatever's on the other side this. of that. And way too ah, fast. Really, really it cool. happened so fast. That's and I was just like, oh shit. Too. Rad. They're just sticking to it. Yeah. Didn't. Did not expect that at all. And Harry's like, fuck, I'm going to kill her now and goes after her. And uh, and as she's chanting and singing, I killed Sirius Black. Uh, I think he uses the Cruciatus curse to stop her. Yeah, he, he tries to. He but tries it doesn't, to. He doesn't, really, uh, but it it doesn't have- really affect her because one of the points that I think he was taught in Goblet of Fire is that you really have to mean it when you well, use the unforgivable. Well, she and that's, that backed up, that's backed up by yeah. Baltimore, oh, okay, who shows okay. up and says, you've got to mean it. Yeah. She killed She killed him. She deserves it, but you got to mean it, man. You're, 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 you're child's play here. We're playing at the big boy level. Uh, and then, of course, we get to, this is the chapter that I was talking about earlier, 
where Harry's like, shit, I've just been outsmarted. Dumbledore's here. He's, or, uh, Voldemort's here. He's about to kill me. And then who should come in through the flu network? Dumbledore. Motherfucking Dumbledore. And it just... And he calls him Tom too, which I, I love, love that. Yeah, I so love. Good. He's like, you made a mistake, Tom. The auras are on their so way. So fucking good. And like soon they'll know. And he's like, I didn't make shit, man. I'll be gone by then, and no one's gonna know. They're still Dude. not gonna believe you. Bellatrix's like exit too was really rad. Where she oh like yeah, slid on slides the back into, into, and into the f- gone. Very very cool. So cool. Some notable moments in this uh, this fight, which is just amazing. Again, all diegetic sounds, no music underneath it. Voldemort breathes that the giant basket fire, which Dumbledore like uses and like slashes at, like he had the 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 sword of uh, Godric Gryffindor. Uh, they do the cool water thing, which encases him. Uh, v fires back with all the glass, and then Dumbledore uses the Baby shield to turn so it into sand. Cool. Uh, and then of course Dumbledore uh, realizes, or Voldemort realizes that he has one final card to play, and says, "You've lost, old man." As he disappears and reappears in Harry's mind, uh, and Harry starts reliving his worst memories so weak so vulnerable uh, and then Dumbledore gets down and whispers to him yeah. it's it isn't <laughs> how you are alike it's how you are not alike uh, and then Harry starts seeing memory, happy memories of his friends uh, as they come in. He, he looks over and he sees his friends come in. And then he starts thinking of all the happy memories he's had. And then he goes, he w- tells Voldemort, you're the weak one. You've never known love or friendship. And I feel sorry for you. Uh, and then we get sucked backwards. Cool visually here with the exception of the weird like Voldemort. Ew. God, um, that, that's another Tobey Maguire like walk on the bad. fucking screen. It I don't know sucked. why they, in- they included those. It's so I bad. It was funny. <laughs> well, we get I know it wasn't meant to be. We get sucked backwards through Harry's memory as he breaks the image. I, I like the image of him break. Like he's looking through. The, the mirror of Eris had mm-hmm. and he's seeing Voldemort with his face on it, and then he just punches it and he breaks it he's like I'm not like you I won't be no. you uh, which I is great bitch. Uh, and then uh, Voldemort comes back into reality and stands above and says you're a fool Harry and you will lose everything just then of course the auras arrive led by Cornelius Fudge uh, via the flu network and Cornelius Fudge looks up and goes shit he's back <laughs> <laughs> like, no like getting right now, but yeah, no. uh, Which, of course, then the uh, Daily Prophet, we start getting, we see the Daily Prophet has vindicated Dumbledore and Harry Potter, proclaiming that the Dark Lord has risen once again. Back at Hogwarts, uh, Harry packs his trunk for the end of the school year. He speaks with Dumbledore one final time, and Harry feels uh, that, it, that all this was his fault, but Dumbledore explains, like, no, it was my fault. I made a bad choice. Uh, it was only a matter of time before uh, Voldemort figured out the connection and used it against us, so I thought by distancing myself from you, uh, it'd be less tempting, but that was just the wrong choice. Uh, Harry figured out the prophecy means that one of them has to die uh, and Dumbledore was, uh, was like yeah we wanted to keep that from you because that's a really kind of hard thing to live with uh, we didn't want you to suffer but probably would have been a real good motivator for Harry to train a little harder for those owls if you know what I'm talking about mm-hmm. uh, and then uh, we see Luna at the very very end putting up posters people stole all of her stuff and she's like it's all good fun but since it's the end of the year I, I, I you know I need, I need my stuff back, back. <laughs> we see her shoes hanging up on the rafter um, they're so mean to her. They're so fucking mean. It's like fucked up. Uh, Harry offers to it's, help her. It's really weird. I don't like her character. I don't really like her. She seems weird in this movie, not knowing all the she's extra weird. shit. She's weird in the book, too. Okay, you start, like, start to love weird her. Girl. Extra weird, where it's just like, okay, why? Mm. Uh, I, think she's, 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 I think she's adorable. I think she's she's like, adorable yeah, too. she's just like a very, like, Again, I, she's very endearing to me. Yeah. Like where you know she, uh, she's aware that she's kind of being bullied, but kind of not really. I don't know. I and, think it's, and she, her think dad is like the head of the Quibbler, which is like this magazine well, that's all about like rumors and shit like that. So she has grown up. She has been raised by this person who like kind of make things up to like sell magazines and shit. So she grows up believing that. I mean, like, I think he Nardles believes. Them. Yeah, no, like he, he, Yeah, he believes all this shit too. Nardles. But he's like all of these like creatures and like weird shit like. Yeah, like she's the type would, that's like, well, I don't have a cell phone because it gives you brain tumors. And yeah. I'm like, well, that's not like, I mean, but she believes it, you know. Yeah. I just think it's another good example of like she should have been in other movies, so that when she is here, it's like, oh, okay. Yeah. I think that's what's happening for the future now. Yeah, and, I, yeah. and that's fair, but just in this movie, just felt really out of place. Mm. Uh, Harry, of course, helps her. He's like, hey, I can uh, offers to help her find her stuff, and she says, you know, what? that's all right. The things we lose have a way of coming back to us in the end, if not always uh, the way we expected. And she goes, I think I'll go have some pudding. Just says I don't care. I don't care about my stuff. She's she's younger, right? She's Jenny's age. Yeah, she's. So I think that's uh, why Jenny we don't get her. more of her. Previously. Yeah, she's a, a yeah we don't meet back. her until this yeah. book uh, as well. Yeah, I do. I do like that conversation though, like where Harry's just like trying to help her. Like, hey, are she's you like, sure? it's okay, you know? like we can just go yeah. a different way. It's really, it's I really like cute. Yeah. Uh, the kids, uh, the whole gang walks back. Now we've got the crew together. So, so it's not just the three of them. Now we've got Neville and Luna and all those people behind him, uh, and Ginny as well. Uh, they walk back toward the Hogwarts Express, uh, and then uh, even though we've got a fight ahead of us, we've got one thing, uh, Harry mentions, even though we've got a fight ahead of us, we've got one thing Voldemort doesn't. We've got something worth fighting for. Uh, and the whistle blows on the Hogwarts Express as the kids climb aboard. True, true. That is the end. There's some good in this of world, of Frodo, and it's worth fighting for. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but at the end, we're just going to go to this weird place. 
<laughs> well, it's called heaven, I think. Fucking God is good heaven. <laughs> Boss baby Instead book quarter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got you. I, I got you. Like you, it no, you did it. You're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Boss babies. He read the books. No, you got to do it again. Do it again. Come on. Boss babies. Book corner. Boss babies. He read the books. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Boss Babies Book Corner, a podcast within a podcast where I share the most important details from the Harry Potter books that were cut from the movies. My name is Barrett Courtney, and this week we are talking about Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, which comes in, Timothy, at 870 fucking pages. It's a big old book. That thing is chonky. It's chonky, and it's the chonkiest book in the entire series, and the the, the time that this movie came out was the shortest movie of the series, but then it gets uh, beaten by, I think, seven part two. But it always blew my mind that this was the longest book and at the time the shortest fucking movie and it drove me and several other people insane. Uh, Detail number one, let's just get into it. Uh, This is kind of more of like a vague thing. Uh, The major thing I think is lost in the adaptation from movie or from book to movie is uh, we don't get Harry's like inner dialogue or inner thoughts at all Uh, and I think that was really a detriment to this movie uh, specifically because this movie is a lot or this book was a lot about isolation and depression and we don't really get a lot of like Harry's specific um, kind of uh, the things that he is like personally dealing with like it, it gets weirdly adapted so to me he kind of comes off like more like whiny and it doesn't make sense and all this stuff whereas I feel like because we get his like inner thoughts in the book it, it, it makes more sense of like why he's feeling uh, the ways that he is feeling uh, but anyway Let's move on to actual details. Detail number two. When Harry gets expelled, Vernon, Uncle Vernon plans on kicking him out for using magic against his son. But Aunt Petunia then gets a howler that screams, Remember my last Petunia, which is which convinces Petunia to let Harry stay, implying that she knew more about the wizarding world than she was letting on, especially when she lets slip that she knows what a Dementor is. Like, Harry's describing, like, a uh, Dementor, and she, like, finishes, like, one of his sentences, and he's like, how do you know this? And uh, she kind of mentions yeah. this uh, story of, like, her and uh, her sister when they were kids, knowing, quote, that horrible boy, unquote, who, like, told him stories about Dementors and whatnot. And uh, she doesn't say it specifically, but she's implying that she's talking about Harry's dad. Uh, we then learn later on that Dumbledore was the one who sent the howler to Petunia. He had sent her, uh, when he had dropped off Harry as a baby, he had like also left a letter. And in that letter, he explained a lot of things. And this is a question that you've had throughout the series, Sam, of why does Harry keep living with the Dursleys? We learn, li- uh, we learn that the reason why Harry was sent to live with the Dursleys is that the protection his mother gave him still lives in Petunia's blood, uh, Lily's only remaining mm. re- uh, relative. So as long as Harry is underage and, call the, and can call the Dursleys house a home, Voldemort cannot harm him there. Petunia knows all of this, and it's why why she like let Harry live with them would be real nice to cool. some yeah. house cool. that yeah and it's like yeah. yeah that's like very important like lore stuff but it's also like kind of a cool character moment of like even though they've been shitty to Harry like his an entire life like Petunia still accepted it and like she still had this moment of recognition of like this was my sister and this is my nephew and I've got to do what I can to protect him even though like I hate wizarding whatever but this uh, was this was this the, the book where, they, where she talks about like is because they very human at one point she gets very humanized uh, that's definitely hollows is yeah. that definitely yeah, hollows? Yeah, yeah, okay yeah. Um, no, spoiler, that would have been cool to know yeah yeah uh, just like just like we found out that uh you know um gosh a uh, fucking Fix. harry's Fix. dad is like okay. was fucking with snape yeah yeah, yeah. Um, he was like a straight well, up bully and shit like that yeah. this is the first time i think you've seen that and i think that does get more Brought explored more, later. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, that's what I mean. Like, yeah. we found that out. I would have loved to learn. Oh, but we see, never find this out in the, no. in the movies. Uh, okay. Detail number three. Why the fuck would they willingly fly in front of muggles right after Harry got in trouble for performing magic in front of a muggle? They make a point. They go up in the clouds and fly above the clouds. I know it's probably not an interesting scene to kind of shoot, but don't go to don't go against the fucking logic of what the story you're telling. Uh, you detail know. number the four. Uh, mm-hmm. Percy, you might have noticed that Percy Weasley was actually like working for the ministry and shit. Uh, Percy Weasley had a falling out with his family uh, since he it's also. Really doesn't believe Harry and Dumbledore uh, because he openly opposes his family. He is given a promotion at the ministry to work uh, right next to Fudge. He actually used to work for Barty Crouch Sr. in Goblet of Fire and the whole mystery of like Barty Crouch Sr. like missing stuff like uh, Percy would be like sent in his stead and all that stuff. But yeah. Little, little things like that. Uh, detail number five, Creature, the house elf's role, is almost entirely cut. There's a point where Sirius yells at him to get out, which uh, Creature interprets as leaving the house. He then goes to see uh, some of the, the other uh, black family members, like uh, Bellatrix Lestrange and uh, Narcissa, who is uh, Mel- Bellatrix's sister and also Malfoy's mom. Mm-hmm. Is Narcissa um, a good one? Narcissa is Malfoy's mom, so no. Yeah, that was um, a joke. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> 
but he was also bound by like house elf rules Just to like evil. not say anything about the order of the phoenix so he can't reveal anything but he helps with the plan to uh lead harry to the ministry so after harry gets the vision of like Sirius being at the ministry of course hermione's like yo we need to confirm like double confirm this with someone before we like go all the way out there and uh they actually like go through like the flu network like communication thing and instead of and they try to hit up uh grimald place but instead of Sirius answering it's a uh, creature and creatures like ah like my master left and he's never coming back and he's not long for this world but in reality Sirius is like downstairs or some shit so like creature it's fed into like that whole reason of why like all of these events happened uh detail number six Ginny is a badass and actually has a personality in the books uh Man. this movie is really bad at doing that uh detail number seven saint mungo's hospital isn't in the movie which is where uh mr weasley is sent after he gets attacked by the snake and it's unfortunate because we get a fun bit where he tries to like heal his bite with like muggle stitches and whatnot and it's like a funny little bit but then we also get a cameo from gilderoy lockhart who is still like deeply affected by his memory oh, charm and then we also uh, meet Neville and his grandma here who are uh, visiting his parents. So we actually, like, meet his parents who, like, we physically see, like, we're super so sad. fucked up and, and whatnot. And, this yeah, is where she, she gives him the button? Yeah, she just, like, kind of gives him the button as, like, a, like a little present or whatever. And you really get the sense of, like... And, like, later you see him, like, he still has it. Yeah, and like it's, like, you can it. tell that it means a lot to him. Yep. And it's, like, fuck, this is intense. Uh, detail number eight, we learned that Umbridge was the one who actually sent the Dementors after Harry um, to silence him worse. because ha Harry was going against the, the Ministry and what the Ministry wanted, and she's, like, one of them crazy bitches who would be, like, yeah, I'm going to send Dementors after you. Mm -hmm. um, and then detail number nine, the Department of uh, Mysteries fight in the book is way more dire. There's a bunch of more rooms. Like, there's a room with a pool of brains that are, like, floating around. There's, like, a room that's, like, fucking with time, and they... They break a, all the time turners. Yeah, they break all the time turners, they but then they like push like this uh, uh, Death Eater into the time thing, but it's only his head. So his head comes out as like just a baby. So it's a baby head on a full man body. He's like running around Funky. and like fu uh, fucking Funky people bunch. up. There's like a moment where we think like Luna is dead. There's a moment where like Ron gets hit by a curse that makes him like really stupid, and he like puts his hand into the pool with all I the can't brains, imagine, so. and like the no brain starts like difference. <laughs> and the brain starts like fucking attacking him and all that stuff. Uh, but anyway, I thought that all that would have been really cool to see in a movie. Uh, Detail number 10, Sirius wasn't hit by the killing curse, but was actually just uh, knocked back through the veil, uh, which was, like, much more terrifying because, like, just because he was, like, kind of, like, pushed back into it, like, Harry goes on the other uh, side to, like, see if he's still there, and he's, like, not, he's gone. And it's, like, kind of this accepted thing of, like, that is, like, a weird portal to the afterlife and death and whatnot, so... Yeah. Fucking terrifying. Um, well, don't they make a point too where he's like, I'll just go through and get him? And Lupin, like, no, yeah, you can't yeah, go. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. He stops like, him. Lupin's like holding him back. Yeah. Uh, and he's and like, then, but he's just on the other right? And he's like, you guys, you can't go there. Yeah. They never they never say, but like, or maybe they do, but like, they in the book, they explain they're in the Department of Mysteries, and this is one of the like super mysterious rooms. Yeah. Where like, like the, some crazy thing is. People are experimenting on stuff yeah. and whatnot. So when you're going through all these rooms of like, why the fuck is there a pool with like brains in it? Like, you really get the sense of like, what the fuck are these people working on? Like, it's really weird. Uh, and then the final detail I have is uh, Harry and Dumbledore, Dumbledore's entire meeting after Sirius's death is like completely different. Like Nick said in the movie, Harry's like, oh, it's my fault. And then Dumbledore is like, oh, no, it's my fault. Oh, I don't know how to emote because it's my fault and then like oh yeah the prophecy means that like one of us has to die at the end right yeah and then that's the scene in the fucking book like harry is furious and like breaking shit and screaming at dumbledore of like he's blaming dumbledore like all oh, this was on fucking you you made these decisions and dumbledore's like silently crying like i yeah i made these mistakes and i'm fucking sorry uh and then the like other thing yeah we learned trelawney was the one who made the prophecy uh, we learned that uh, he has a backup prophecy too, or he has the original prophecy in his office. No, well, he he was like made it, so yeah, he can like weirdly like recite it or whatever. Uh, we learn that. Um we learn, like, implications of the prophecy of, like, Harry could walk away from this destiny, but he would just have to accept that one day, if he doesn't prepare for this, Voldemort will be more likely to be able to kill him and all this shit. Uh, we learned that one of Voldemort's spies uh, had overheard the prophecy being made, uh, but only, like, the first half of it and whatnot, and that's why, like, Voldemort immediately went to, like, go attack Harry, because if he had heard the second half, maybe he would, like, w would have waited and all this shit. And then uh, one of the Find things... Find out who the spy is later. Uh, and so... 
Uh, they talk about how also Trelawney was. That's why he kept her around. Yeah, right? like he knew like she wasn't a great. He knew like, she uh, sucked, but yeah. she did the one prophecy where he's like, yeah. maybe she'll be useful. And while, like maybe know? we she need does that to, other prophecy later. In. And then like maybe we need to protect her and stuff. And then the last thing uh, you might have noticed him, Harry's name wasn't actually like mentioned in the prophecy itself when it was being made, uh, and that's because uh, Harry wasn't the only child who fit the description of the prophecy, and Voldemort actually had to choose between Harry and Neville Longbottom. Neville mm. Longbottom was like the other candidate for this and something that Dumbledore points out is that Voldemort chose the wizard who came from more of a half-blood uh, family like Voldemort did because Voldemort's dad is a muggle uh, rather than going after the child who came from a pure blood family so like already early on like Voldemort had already seen like there's something here with this kid of like why I need to take him down but yeah there you but go. it was also like luck of the draw, right? Where he's just like, ah, it's going to be one of these kids. I'll just choose one. And that, and that, then, because it could have been Neville. Yeah, it, it could have been Neville, but Dumbledore points out the fact that, like, Voldemort chose the child who came from more of a half blood uh, background. Right. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that wraps up this week's uh, episode of <coughs> Boss Baby's Book Corner. What are some of your favorite details that I couldn't get to? Leave them in the comments below, because, yeah, this was a long one and a short movie. Uh, but so while, you're, while, uh, too. while you're at it, why don't you give this uh, video a like? Uh, share with your friends who also love Harry Potter and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. I'll see you next week for another episode of Book Corner. But until then, Crucio. Now it's time for the golden snitches. Get stitches. The cool Greg effect. Oh, I love that. That's great. That's even better. Hasn't it been that the whole time? Yeah, yeah. it's been that the whole yeah. time. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> cool Greg, what you got for me? I mean, I fuck with Voldemort super tough, baby. I, I want to put some focus on when J.K. Rowling finished making this, writing this movie or whatever, she caught a tag in her hotel room and they left it there. That's pretty fucking dope. Man. <laughs> That's cool. That's really cool. <laughs> Thank That's you. That's really cool. Thank you, All cool right. Greg. I don't know what that means. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Raggy. Dun, 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 dun. Oh my god. <laughs> Welcome Pick to Rad up. Guys. Fine. There was nothing in there. Oh. Welcome to Rad Guys Talk Bad Guys. My name is Andy Cortez, joined by my co-host Nick Scarpino. Hello, we're all. here to we're a couple of rad guys here to rank some bad some guys. Bad so guys. far the list is Baby V and the Funky Bunch, <laughs> Serious yeah. Demoteers, Tom Elvis, Judas or Voldy. Hat guy and Voldemort. Mm -hmm. Where should Umbridge and Voldemort go? I think number one. To me, number one. Yeah, they're number Good one. Just, for the, just from the the, the, the performance that this the actor did, she did it's phenomenal. She she brought that character to life and all of its haunting uh, abilities, and it's just perfect. And yeah. we still get Voldemort and the Funky Punch. We do get Voldemort. Yeah. We get yeah. the Bunch. funkiest one. We get the Death Eaters also. We get all Bellatrix. that stuff. Bellatrix. Yeah, we get Bellatrix was strange. This Re is really horrifying all... group of people. But I do think that like if Bellatrix was any lesser of a character. This, you know, I think this movie would have been super weak. Yeah. But she, uh, it was just perfectly played. She made you hate her. Uh, she gave you reason Wait, to you're hate about her. Umbridge. 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 Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Sorry. I was like, um, Matt Bellatrix really impacted yeah, you. Yeah. yeah, yeah <laughs> From the five yeah. minutes she was on screen. Um. Yeah. The. Uh, I. I just thought her performance was fucking off the charts. She's great. Yeah. yeah. Great. Fantastic. Really, really makes you feel it for sure. That's rad guys talk bad guys. Follow us on Ragu Bagu Vids on Twitter. If you want to support that on Patreon, eight hundred bucks. Somehow. Yeah. Just give it to me. Seven hundred dollars. That's it. Or a pocket. Hit me with the haiku in review, please. Seven syllables in the middle. You need five for the first and last line. If you're not poetic, no need to fret it. Haikus don't need to rhyme. Haiku in review. Haiku in review. Everybody now read, Tim. Ladies and gentlemen, you can go to patreon.com slash kindoffunny to support and write in with your review in haiku form just like Clay Harden did. Clay Harden says, fudge is a coward. Fuck you, Dolores Umbridge. It's time to fight back. Jared Miller says, this book is the longest. The film is the shortest one. How did this happen? <laughs> How indeed. I'm glad it was this short, though. Mm -hmm. Daniel Edmonds mm -hmm. says, why is there a pic of Fudge on Umbridge's desk? They banging or what? Yeah. <laughs> he just loves him. Loyalty. Uh, Fudge is giving her that fudge. <laughs> Beasonal says, Sirius is, yeah, God, Nick. Sirius <laughs> is dead. Like pooping on her chest? Or? <laughs> Dumbledore is confusing. Ooh, magical. Harry Luna ship. Um, oh, you're, you're shipping Harry and Luna. KCW says, Umbridge is the worst. Centaurs are hella dope, yo. Jenny's a bad bitch. I think you mean Ginny. Ginny, yeah. It says Ginny. Ginny. Oh. <laughs> Jenny. <laughs> Jenny. 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 She's a bad bitch. He's a really big fan of and Forrest There, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, that she's doing is... coke in the 70s and like banging a bunch of dudes and, and she gets AIDS and she expects Forrest Gump to still be with her. Damn, and he does because he's a good guy. Yeah. It's like sad. And but also just an idiot. Like, kid have AIDS? We don't know. Yeah. How now it's time to rank the Harry no. Potter universe. Bear, can you please bring there's this a, up? There's a sequel. Currently, number one, Goblet of Fire. Number two, Prisoner of Azkaban. Number three, Sorcerer's Stone. Number four, Chamber of Secrets. Gentlemen, 
Where would you want to put this movie? It's a tricky one, man. Because this one, uh, it gets better the more we talk about it. And it's moving up my rankings, I think, significantly. Hmm. I want to put this at like number two. That's I, what I was thinking. That's I what put I was this thinking. At number three. That last Azkaban. fight. The last, the last couple last fights were so just good. make this movie so cool. Yep. And I really do think this is a movie that opens up the greater like Wizarding World and really establishes all the characters. Um, granted, that's just the book itself, but like I love that Neville is a real character now. Ginny's starting to be a real character. Uh, we fleshed out the gang of of like Ride or Die Dumbledore's army. Uh, we get a lot of lore in this, and just those last couple fights are just really, really cool. Yeah, I put it as number two as well. Like, I just feel like it's going in the direction of what I like about mm. this series and minimizing a lot of the stuff that I don't like. Um, the, the them being more grown up and like fighting back and like learning how to like the whole idea of it's a war and like we're building towards an inevitable huge fight with these guys. I'm so hyped. Uh, to see where the, these movies go, but I thought this one did a really good job of keeping me interested, and I love the government school level democracy, like weird shit going on. Very, very interesting, and didn't expect these movies to go that direction. I love how long it took us to get to Hogwarts in the beginning, but it still kept me interested. Every other movie I hated in the beginning when it's like, let's just get to Hogwarts and like let's go, and this one was like, them out of Hogwarts was just as interesting, and they really built the world. Love the look of the... Um, the subway and the minute all the Ministry of Magic stuff. It's just like I believe it and it's finally the thing where my oh This is as cool as you're making it sound yeah. instead of it being kind of like weird and quirky and this one does finally doesn't feel little kid It feels like we're making real movies Yeah, um, I don't I, I agree with all your points. I I really dig the intro. <laughs> I just think you're completely wrong I just, <laughs> I just, I just think you're an asshole I agree with all that. <laughs> <It's just dumb. laughs> No, yeah, I, I just still didn't find this as enjoyable as Azkaban. I feel like Azkaban is still the one that I, I feel like Azkaban is gonna be my You know how Nick felt about the first Iron Man and Fast and Furious and stuff like that This Azkaban is that for me where I felt like that was the most special one to me uh, So I still have this one at uh, number three. I'll put this at number three Should we vote? Cool, Greg Oh. I put it at number three as well. Mm. All right, well, it's time to vote then. <laughs> Who thinks it's better than Chamber of Secrets? Raise your hand. Everyone raises their hand. Who thinks it's better than Sorcerer's Stone? Raise your hand. Everyone raises their hand. Who thinks it's better than Prisoner of Azkaban? Raise your hand. Tim, Nick, and Kevin, raise your hand. Ladies and gentlemen, the new ranking of the Harry Potter universe is number one, Goblet of Fire. You didn't go for number one, though. Well, yeah, but... Oh, you all no, think it's good. Sure. I guess you're right. You think it's better than Goblet of Fire? Raise your hand. No. No one. <laughs> None of us raise our hand. <laughs> you're right. Good you're job, right. Mandy. Yeah. Yeah. The new rankings are number one, Goblet of Fire. Number two, fuck's this movie called? Order the Phoenix. Number three, Prisoner of Azkaban. Number four, Sorcerer's Stone. Number five, Chamber of Secrets. Next week, we return with Harry Potter and the Half Blood Prince. Ah, it's almost over. Sounds cool as fuck. Damn, dude, I'm shocked. <laughs> like, I thought, I, I thought it'd be four, three, Five, but I mean, this is number one for Barrett. He loves this movie. He no. said, "Don't joke." Yeah, about no. he said he asked you not to. Joke <laughs> <about that. laughs> I fucking <laughs> Until next week, Wingardium Adiosa.